On day one, I woke up in a basket floating down a river. Whoa, where am I? Who am I? The basket washed up on the edge of the river and I hopped onto the shore. That's when I noticed I had a cane in my hand. I took a closer look. The cane of Moses, a reminder of his parents. I'm Moses, but I'm just a baby with three hearts. At least my parents gave me this cool cane that doesn't seem to have any special powers. I wonder where they are. Just then, I heard a splash in the water behind me and a crocodile came jumping out of the water. Ah, I gotta go. A giant crocodile like that could eat a baby like me in one bite. As I ran into the desert, I soon climbed a hill finding a small village on the other side. A village? I'll bet there's someone here who can help me find my parents. As I ran into the village, I noticed there didn't seem to be anyone around. Hello? Anyone? Can anyone hear me? Hello? I had run through the whole village, but nobody was here. Another mystery to solve. It was soon getting late, so I decided that I'd spend the night here. Maybe I could find out what was going on tomorrow. On day two, I woke up to the silence of the abandoned village. If I'm gonna find out where everyone went, I need to be prepared. The house I was in needed some repairs, so I headed over to the trees to get myself some wood. Using the wood I had gathered, I made myself a stone pickaxe as well as some wood slabs. Then I used the wood slabs to fill in the roof. Next up, more tools. I headed over to a nearby hill and used my pickaxe to gather limestone that could be used to make limestone tools. As I was mining though, a husk suddenly appeared at the top of the hill. Oh no, I don't have any weapons yet. I hurried and put together a crafting table, then used that to craft a limestone sword. I turned around just in time. The husk and I had a fearsome battle and he brought me down to half a heart. Armed with my sword though, I was able to deliver the final blow. That's what you get for trying to mess with me. It was at that moment that I realized I didn't have any food. I had seen a wheat field earlier, so I built myself a bridge across the river so I could go to it. I was pretty sure I couldn't swim. I was just a baby after all. With my stomach growling, I quickly started harvesting as much wheat as I could. Suddenly, I heard something rustling in the wheat behind me and turned to see a hippo. Ha! Ah, oh wait, you're just a baby, like me. What's your name? Just then, I heard a terrifying sound and turned to see an adult hippo looking right at me. Get away from my little brother! He looked angry and I still only had half of a heart. I had to get out of there. I ran back across my bridge, breaking a couple blocks behind me. Once I had gotten away, I hurried and made myself some bread. Bread has never tasted so good. Later that evening, I heard a sound outside my window. When I looked outside, the baby hippo from before was out there. Hey, I'm sorry to bug you, but I wanted to apologize for earlier. My brother Hugo is kind of intense. I hopped down the side of the building. That's okay, he really scared me. You seem nice though. I try to be. My name is Harry. Here, I brought you some fish to say sorry. I'll see you around. I thanked him for the fish and quickly got them cooking in the furnace so they could be ready for the next day. Then I used some of my remaining limestone to finish making a set of limestone tools. On day three, I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of footsteps. The villagers, they must be back. I hurried down the ladder to greet them when I was suddenly swarmed by a group of husks. Oh no, I forgot to fix the door. The husks tried to surround me as I ran out of the house. I could fight one of them off, but it wasn't looking like I could handle a whole group of them. Just as all hope was lost, Hugo came charging in to help. In no time, he managed to fight off all of the husks. Wow, you saved me. Thank you. No problem. Harry told me he stopped by and said you were a nice guy. Sorry for scaring you earlier. That's okay. Those husks should have been more scared. Feel free to stop by any time. After Hugo had left, I suddenly felt more strength returning to my limbs and I grew into a teenager. And now I have seven hearts. The next day, I was walking around the edge of town when I saw someone taking a look at the basket I had spawned in. Just then, the crocodile that had attacked me showed up again, catching her off guard. Hang on, I'll help you. I ran over to her and started fighting off the crocodile. With my new strength, I was much better suited for this fight. I kept swinging my sword and was able to take him out. Wow, nice moves. I thought I was a goner for sure. I'm happy to help. Say, I was hoping you might be able to help me with Something. The village over there is completely empty. Do you know what happened to everyone? Oh, yes, the people that used to live here. They're gone. Yeah, yeah, do you know where? Yeah, I do. They moved. Oh, really? All of them? Something bad must have happened. Uh, no, not bad. Um, they all live in the city now. My dad is actually the pharaoh there. Speaking of, you should come live in the city. It's really not safe out here. I agreed, and she showed me the way. I was getting tired of being attacked by crocodiles and husks every day. On days four to five, the princess and I arrived at the big city. The princess, whose name was Nubia, showed me around. Wow, this city is huge. It must have taken a long time for you guys to build everything. Nubia simply nodded as we walked closer to the palace. She was taking me to meet the pharaoh. As I entered the throne room, I could see the pharaoh sitting on his throne. Nubia, welcome home. And who do we have here? Father, I wanted you to meet Zozo. I was attacked by a crocodile, and he saved me when I thought all hope was lost. Nubia, what have I told you about wandering along the river? Thank goodness young Zozo was here to save you. Zozo, I am in your debt. Please, let me settle it by giving you a place to stay here in our prosperous city. Wow, that would be amazing. This is a beautiful city. I will give you one of our finest rooms. You can live next door to my son. Ramses, come say hello to our new friend. Ramses came running over with two servants behind him. I heard you saved my sister. Nice going. Although, don't get too comfortable 
uncomfortable. She's always needing someone to bail her out. Nubia rolled her eyes as the pharaoh led us out to a balcony overlooking the city. This city is my pride and joy. As our newest citizen, I just want to make sure you understand its history. Many years ago, I was born to rule and lead these people. If not for me, this place would be a disaster. So anyone who lives here should be happy and grateful to be here. I nodded, but man, this guy really seemed full of himself. But I did appreciate having a place to stay. I couldn't wait to meet all the happy people in the kingdom. Nubia, please, show Zozo around the city so he can see everything I've accomplished. Ramses, you join them. Go on. Ramses, Nubia, and I left the palace, and they began to show me around. There were some really amazing things to see. There were monuments, statues, and lots of buildings. This was some of the best building I had ever seen. Wow, I can't believe your dad was able to build all of this. That's really impressive. Well, he didn't actually build it himself. The people from the desert villages built a lot of it. Yeah, but if dad wouldn't have given them direction and a place to live, they would have been miserable. They're much happier here. We continued the tour, but I started to notice that most of the people didn't seem to look very happy. In fact, I thought all of them looked like they were hungry. I wasn't so sure about all of this. At the end of the day, Ramses showed me to my room. It was a lot nicer than the rooms of the people we had passed. He told me to get some rest, as tomorrow there was a special show scheduled that he thought I'd enjoy. I headed over to the bed and laid down for the night. On day six through eight, I followed Nubia and Ramses out of the palace and to the city coliseum. Ramses seemed pretty excited about the special show we were going to. We soon reached the VIP booth where the pharaoh was already seated. You can take my seat, Zozo. I like to get close to the action. As I sat, I noticed that Nubia didn't seem very happy to be here, but she didn't say anything. Just then, a door in the arena opened and a gladiator came walking into the arena as the crowd cheered. Were we about to watch some kind of fight? Then the door on the opposite side opened and a giant hippo entered the arena. Is that Hugo? Hugo was chained to a post and the gladiator started to attack him. The crowd began to cheer. What is he doing? He's going to hurt him. Yes, my boy, that is the point. That's our strongest warrior down there, giving us all a little entertainment after a long week's work. But it's not even a fair fight. Hugo's chained to the post. He can barely fight back. Hugo, don't tell me you've named the beast. He's no beast. He's my friend. I'm sorry, but I have to do this. I thought I saw Nubia give me a small grin as I jumped down into the arena. I ran up to the gladiator and hit him with my sword. What the? Where did this keep come from? My hit had managed to distract the gladiator for just a second, which let Hugo start to get some hits in. With the gladiator distracted, I quickly broke the post he was chained to, then jumped on his back. Enough! Several pillars rose up from the ground as the pharaoh rose from his seat. Zozo, we opened our homes to you out of the kindness of our hearts, and this is how you repay us? If you won't accept us, then we can never accept you. Leave now, or my gladiator will destroy you. You are hereby banished. This hippo is my friend. I can't support someone who would hurt him for their own entertainment. I'm sorry. I turned and rode out of the city on Hugo's back. How was I going to survive now? On days 9 through 10, I was wandering in the desert. Hugo had told me to stay with him, but I couldn't risk putting him in danger, so I continued on alone. But I couldn't feel too bad for myself, as I was suddenly attacked by a pack of hyenas. I'm definitely not in the city anymore. Get back, you fiends! The hyenas snapped at me, but I managed to hit them enough to keep them all away from me. I better hurry and find some place to set up camp. It's starting to get hot out here. Lucky for me, I soon came across some old ruins. There are all kinds of cool structures here. As I walked through the ruins, I also saw there was an oasis nearby. Oh man, this is just what I needed. This oasis was a beautiful spot to build a camp to to live in, so I got right to work building myself a house. It wasn't anything big or fancy, but it was just right for me. I soon finished. Well, I might as well check out some of these ruins while I'm here. I hiked into some of the nearby ruins and started looking through the dusty crates. There were some basic food and resources, but the real gem was the golden desert armor. I kept looking through the crates and was able to find an entire set. This is great. I'm already starting to feel safer. I hiked back to my camp when I heard some sheep nearby. I gathered them up and put them in a pen. These sheep give me an idea. I found a nice plot in the desert and started working on a statue. I think this is going to look really cool out here. I'd love to hear what you think it's going to be. After a bit, part one of the statue was complete. On days 11 through 12, I woke up to something interesting outside my door. It was a note. Hello, I saw you come to the old ruin down below. I saw you build with such passion and enthusiasm. You show great promise. I would like to meet you. Come to the location marked on the map. It is in the mountains near here. Huh, this could be a trap set by the pharaoh, but I think it's worth the risk. They might be able to help me. With the map in hand, I made my way out into the desert. I had to climb a large hill, but as I reached the top, I saw a torch outside a cave. Inside the cave was an old man. Zozo, I'm so happy you've come. Hi. Who are you? I used to be the leader of the desert people, but the pharaoh came and forced them to work for him. He says everyone is happy, but that's because anyone who says otherwise is never seen again. I knew something was off. I could tell the people in the city weren't as happy as he said they were. Are you going to save them? The old man smiled. In a way, but that work will be done through you. Me? How could someone like me ever defeat a powerful pharaoh? He is powerful, but he relies too much on his own strength. There are other ways we can defeat him. What do you mean? That city is his greatest source of pride. If we can destroy 
destroy his city, not only will he fall apart, but the people of the city can rise up and escape. That city is nothing without the work of the people. It will be up to you to make things bad for him. I should also mention that there is a powerful item buried in this cave. You're not ready for it yet, but I know one day you will be. I'll do my best. I think I know where to get started. I thanked the old man and headed out of the cave. It was time to head back to the city. On days 13 to 15, I crossed the desert back toward the city. The city soon came into view, and I started stacking my way to the top of the city. If I was going to cause some disruptions, I needed to get a closer look at what was around. I ran along the top of the city and looked over the edge. That's when I noticed there was a water supply running through the center of the city. Hmm, if I could disrupt the water supply, that would definitely cause some problems for the pharaoh. But I can't cut it off. That would hurt innocent people. Just then, I had the perfect idea, but I needed to head back to the river. I ran back across the city top and headed to the river. Soon, I had reached the riverside, and I could see flowers on the other side. Need a ride? Hugo, perfect timing. I was just wondering how I would get across. I soon reached the other side and started gathering up as many roses and poppies as I could. I was going to need them for my special project. Once I had finished collecting as many as I could, I met Hugo back down by the river. Hey, I found this health regeneration necklace at the bottom of the river. I thought you might be interested in it. Hugo tossed out the necklace, which I picked up and equipped. He then let me hop on his back and gave me a ride back across the river. Time to get back to the base and start working on my secret plan. On day 16 to 19, I got right to work building a mill. I had a big project in mind, so I was going to need a tool to help me get all of the work done quick. The mill was soon complete, and I got right to work, adding all the flowers I had gathered the day before to the machine. It didn't take too long, but I soon had a large amount of red dye. This ought to be enough dye. It's all coming together. Just then, I heard a sound outside and went to check out the noise. There was a group of tomb raiders outside. They must be here to raid the ruins. They caught sight of me and charged. I'm not a bad guy. Back off. The raiders were strong and nearly took all of my health. They had some good gear. I wonder if they found all of this in the old tombs. Thankfully, though, I was able to overcome their sword swings and take them all out. As they disappeared, I noticed that they dropped some iron bars. Iron! This will help me be even stronger than before. Guess I'm glad they came here after all. Just then, I felt more strength surged through me and I grew into an adult. And check it out, I even have a beard. Oh, and more hearts too. I headed over to the crafting table and by using the iron I'd picked up, made myself some new iron gear. If anything went wrong on my secret mission tomorrow, I would be ready for a fight. Then I went over to the statue and got to work on the second part. It might look like I'm finishing it, but I have a whole other part to do. Be sure to keep watching to see what it is. On days 20 to 22, I snuck my way back over to the city, ready to put my plan into action. But first, I had to make it there, as I was suddenly attacked by a group of wraiths. Ah, you guys are freaky! With my new iron gear though, they were going to have a hard time taking me out. I swung my sword and was able to destroy all of them. That was scary, but I've got a mission to complete. Soon I was making my way through the city streets. There were a lot of guards wandering around, but if I was sneaky, I could weave through the buildings. I had to get to the water supply. I almost got caught, but finally I made it to the source of the water. Halt! Uh-oh, looks like I've got company. A small group of guards attacked. There were a lot of them, but I had to see this through. They hit me again and again, nearly taking all of my health. I can't let them win. I must save the people of this city. I rose up and started swinging even stronger than before. I was starting to win. There was only one guy left, but he managed to get away. I better hurry. I'm sure there will be more guards coming soon. I ran back over to the water supply and started throwing the dye into the water. If I could turn the water red, people might start blaming the pharaoh for their lack of clean water. It took a little while for the change to take effect, but soon the water had all turned red. What do you think you're doing? I looked down and saw the guard had returned with the gladiator from the arena. I wasn't going to be able to run away this time. Who do you think you are coming back here? And what happened to the water? What have you done? The pharaoh is no hero. He's forcing people to work for him. It's not right. He needs to let these people go. No one's going to ruin our city, especially a little desert man like you. The gladiator attacked. This was their city's strongest warrior. This was going to be quite the fight. He had a massive sword that really packed a punch. It doesn't have to be like this. Surely you can see that the pharaoh is evil. My life seems pretty good. Too bad yours is over. My health was nearly gone, but I had to keep fighting for these people. I kept moving and was finally able to land the final hit. As the gladiator disappeared, he dropped his sword. A claymore, huh? This thing is huge, but it's as light as a feather. I took a look at the guard and he took off running again. What a wimp. I took a look at the water again. Well, I'm surely going to get the pharaoh's attention now. Just then, I heard a bunch of feet running. A whole battalion of guards were running right at me. That's my cue. Time to go. I jumped over the wall and the guards ran up and looked down at me. Now I just need to wait and see how the pharaoh responds to my mission. On days 23 to 26, I was still making my way across the desert. Up ahead, I could see some orange rocks. Oh, I could use those for the next stage of the statue. I ran over and got to work mining them out. I've got a cool idea for what I could add to the statue. I think everyone will really like it. As I finished mining, I noticed there was a cave nearby. Maybe there are resources inside I could use. I made my way down into the
the cave and soon came across some iron ore. Perfect, this is just what I was looking for. I kept going deeper into the cave, mining more resources. Suddenly, the room opened up and there was a massive subscribe on the wall. Oh, wow. Thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. I'm having a lot of fun and I hope you are too. If you haven't subbed yet, I'd love to have you join the team. On days 27 to 31, I was out of the cave and heading back to my base. As I was crossing the desert, I saw a bunch of camels escaping from their caravan. Hang on, I'll help you. The camels went running off behind a small dune and I followed them to the other side. I soon saw that the animals had gathered at a nearby oasis. Hey guys, you were just a little thirsty, weren't you? Suddenly, the camels ran away and a giant crab came walking out of the water. Whoa, where the heck did you come from? The crab snapped at me with his pincers as I swung my sword. His hard shell was difficult to crack, but not too hard for my new sword. The crab was quickly defeated. Whew, now let's get these camels back to their rightful owner. I led the camels back to the grateful trader. Thank you, thank you, sir. Say, are you the one who changed the city water red? I'm glad someone is standing up to the pharaoh. I have a lot of good friends trapped in that city. I passed by there and the pharaoh was pretty mad. Oh yeah? I'm glad to hear it worked. Hopefully it will make the people angry enough to rise up against him. Well, everyone is upset and he's mad, but he's made it even harder for everyone. He's also doubled security around the city. I'm afraid it didn't do what you were hoping. Oh no, I'll have to figure something else out. Ah, I know just the thing. The trader headed over to one of his chests, then returned and placed a strange box in front of me. Here, you can have this. Think of it as a thank you for rescuing my camels. The trader opened the box and a bunch of frogs jumped out. I didn't see how a box full of frogs, which now had no frogs in it, was going to be any help, but I didn't want to be rude as he was clearly excited to give it to me. Wow, that is so cool. Thanks. I invited the trader to come stay at my base with me to sell his wares. The city wouldn't be safe for him if people knew he had helped me. He agreed, but needed to take care of some things first. I picked the box up and headed back to my base. What could I do next to stop the pharaoh? On days 32 to 35, I returned back to my base. I wasn't sure what to do next yet, but figured it would be a good time to empty my pockets and start smelting the iron I had collected. With the iron ingots, I then crafted a full set of desert iron armor, as well as a new set of iron tools. I had also gotten a few diamonds in the cave earlier, so I used those to make myself a new diamond pick. Whatever my next step is, I'll be ready for a fight. Just then, I heard the sound of a camel outside and met the trader as he rode up. Hey, glad you could make it. I was thinking about it and I think it'll be a good idea if we build you a shop. Maybe people are scared to leave the city because they have nowhere else to go. That is a brilliant idea. I just picked up some fresh items, so I have plenty of things to sell. I quickly got to work building the trader a shop. If I couldn't free all the people from the city, at the very least I could give the ones who do escape a place to live. The shop was soon finished. Once the trader had settled in, I walked up to see what he had to sell. Hey, I hope you're all settled in. I was hoping you might have some kind of special item that could help me get back at the pharaoh. The trader gave me a confused look. What do you mean? I thought you would be able to do something with the frog box. Oh yeah, I mean it was it was really cool when you showed showed me it was full of frogs, but since they all had hopped away, I don't really know what to do with it now. Ah, I see. I may not have explained it very well. You see, it's an infinite frog box. Every time you open it, more frogs will come out. You will never run out of frogs. Man, this guy was really into frogs. But just then, inspiration struck. I had a new idea to get back to the pharaoh, but I was gonna need some help from some old friends. On days 36 to 39, I had arrived back at the river where I met up with Hugo and some of his pals. Hugo, I had a question for you. I recently got this box that can create infinite frogs and I know just what to do with it. The problem is, I don't have a good way to get into the city now that it has increased security. Do you know a good way in? Before Hugo could answer though, the small bird on his back piped up. Oh, I know just the thing. Hang on one second. The little bird flew off. Where could he be going? Moments later, he returned with a much bigger bird. This is my friend. We're all sick of the pharaoh capturing all of our bird friends and keeping them in cages. The big bird explained that he could pick me up and carry me over the city, which would let me shake the box, dropping frogs through the whole city. That's a perfect plan. Meet me at the mountaintop near my base tomorrow morning. We've got some frogs to drop. On days 40 to 43, the big bird met me on top of the mountain. I hopped on his back and we flew away toward the city. As we got closer, I could see all the new guards defending it. Let's see them defend against this. As we flew over the city, I started dropping frogs. Down below, I could see the city had started to wake up with a few people roaming around the streets. As the frogs landed, I could hear screams as people began to panic. It looks like the plan is working. By the time I had finished dropping the frogs, the sun had fully risen and the whole city could see something was wrong. I was too busy looking down at the people when I accidentally slipped and fell off the bird, landing in the water below. Oh, uh-oh, that wasn't part of the plan. I hopped up as a couple of townspeople ran over to me. Zozo, these frogs are disgusting, but we're so glad you're here. The pharaoh is so mean. We want to help, but don't have anywhere to go. Just then, I heard a shout. The guards were coming. Stay behind me. I have a safe place we can go. We ran for the exit as a group of guards charged at us. Looks like I'm going to have to fight my way out of this one. The guards were intense, but I was able to cut them down and keep pushing for the exit. Soon enough, we had fought our way out of the city and ran to the desert. I wonder if the frogs would be enough for the pharaoh to let the people go.
On days 44 to 49, I arrived back at the base with all of the villagers. We went to have a chat with the trader. My goodness, Zozo. Look at all of these customers. They are, I mean, people. I'm so happy they were able to escape. So am I. They are here to join our cause. Hopefully, we can help everyone else escape too. But in the meantime, let's start building a place for you all to stay. Out behind my house, I got to work making a space for all of the villagers to build their homes. Once the area was prepped, they helped me to build their houses. We had a real town coming together. Soon, all the houses were done. Good job, everyone. This place is looking really great. I can't wait to get more people to move in. With all of the villagers moved in, I was feeling inspired to add the next part of the statue. With a little bit of help, I was able to finish the first part of the next section. Any guesses what I'm building next? After I was finished, the villagers came out to me with a real problem. If people were going to live here, we needed a way for everyone to eat. That's a good point. I think it's a good chance for us to strike back at the pharaoh too. I think we should go back to the city and bring all of their livestock here. That food should belong to you. The villagers agreed. The city would surely fall without a food source. This is a great idea, but I'm sure the pharaoh is going to have increased security. How am I going to be strong enough to get in this time. Eh, uh, Zozo? Who are you talking to? I think the heat might be getting to you, but I did find something in the ruins that might help with your problem. Follow me. On days 50 to 53, the trader led me to the tomb entrance. He explained that the tomb seemed untouched, but he was too scared to go inside. Well, I'll go take a look. Hopefully we can find something helpful. I ran inside. Right ahead of me was a book on a pedestal, so I opened it up. Uh, yeah, this book isn't very helpful. If I can't even read the book, how am I ever going to get into this place? Wait a second, what's that? Just behind me was a button. I hit the button and heard a secret panel on the wall open. I headed through and entered a massive room. This must have been a pharaoh's tomb. Who dares enter my tomb? If you can defeat my guardians, then perhaps I will share my secret power with you. Suddenly, a bunch of gas appeared and started to attack me. Woo, scary. But that secret power sounds just like what I need. The gas were not very happy to see me and kept shooting fireballs. Unlucky for them, though, I was able to hop around and hit the fireballs right back at them. As I destroyed them, I saw that they were dropping gunpowder. Gunpowder? That gives me an idea for the next time we go to the city. I kept fighting until finally all of the gas were defeated. I picked up the gunpowder and took a look around the room. I soon saw a passageway, which led me deeper into the tomb. You may have defeated my gas, but I am not finished with you yet. Just then, I ran into a jackal, and boy was this guy strong. Those spears are way too OP. I was able to use my shield to block, but just a few hits from the jackal would take me out. I managed to eat some food and heal up, then began to fight back. It was a close one, but I was able to win the fight. I kept going through the tomb when I saw a small tunnel up ahead. Suddenly, I fell down a hole, landing in a small pool of water. What? How did you get this far? Well, you won't like this. Just then, a bunch of blazes spawned in and started to attack. One of them even managed to catch me on fire. The fire definitely didn't feel good, but luckily, they weren't as strong as they looked. I was able to defeat them pretty quickly. There was a staircase nearby, so I followed that. I had to be close. Just then, I entered another room and saw the mummified pharaoh appear. I made it! I'll take that secret power, please. You know, I thought about it, and I decided I want to keep it. Shazam! A bunch of mummies spawned and attacked me. They were slow, but strong. But I had made it this far, and nothing was going to stop me. The mummies were soon destroyed. Ah, uh, okay. I guess I'll just do this myself. The pharaoh hopped down and started to attack me too. You know, we don't have to fight. You can just give me the prize. Do you have any idea how bored I am? At least this is something to do. Hiya! Honestly, if this guy wasn't attacking me, we'd probably be friends. Soon enough, I had landed a bunch of blows, and he was nearly defeated. Okay, okay, I think you've proved your point. Go ahead and take the prize. The mummy pharaoh disappeared. I hopped up and took a look inside of his tomb and found a totem of undying, a set of raw armor, and Horus's ascension. I quickly put on all of the armor and equipped the weapon. Just then, the power began to course through me and I leveled up into a powerful, full-grown man. And check it out. My beard is legendary. Before leaving the tomb, I had to try out the new weapon. Outside the room, I ran into some more mummies. I hit them with the Horus's ascension, which sent them flying into the air. Looks like it's time to head back to the city and get those animals. On days. 54 to 57, I emerged from the tomb, then returned back to my house to craft. At my crafting table, I put together some TNT. You know what they say, the best way out is always through. We're gonna blast our way right through the walls. I went to talk to the villagers, and a few of them agreed to come with me to help. We traveled across the desert, and soon came to the farm on the edge of the city. I set up the TNT, and set it off. Fire in the hole! The TNT blew a hole in the wall, and we ran into the farm. Alright, you guys start wrangling the animals, and I'll get us some hay. I ran into a nearby shelter, and picked up a few hay bales. I ran back outside, and handed the 
them out to the villagers. With the hay in hand, they managed to round up all the animals and lead them away. Looks like they're gonna make it out. I might as well grab some more wheat before I leave. I quickly got to it, cutting up as much wheat as I could. I had just about finished gathering all of the wheat and seeds when a group of guards ran up. But look who was leading them. Ramses, what are you doing here? Zozo, you're the man from the desert? I barely recognize you. I'm so happy to see you again. You're not angry to see me? I thought you were here to attack me. No, in fact, I've been trying to join you. All of us here have seen my father's power and influence fading. Please, let us join your community. I couldn't believe my luck. Ramses had been so nice to me before, and I was happy to have him as part of our group. The more people we had, the better chance we had to free the rest of the villagers. On days 58 to 62, I was back at the base when one of the villagers pulled me aside. He was nervous about Ramses being there with a bunch of palace soldiers. Could we really trust him? Before I could answer, Ramses walked up with his guards. Don't worry, friend. You don't have anything to worry about. If I didn't come with good intentions, I wouldn't tell you this. The Pharaoh is actually putting together a large army and plans to attack. If that's the case, then we need to get prepared. Please, if everyone could give me a hand, we can build everything we need. Don't you think it'll be wiser just to leave things how they are? This is a nice community here. Attacking the Pharaoh will only end in failure. I've seen how powerful this army is. I think you lack faith, my friend. We won't rest until everyone has been freed. I'm positive we can find a way to win. Ramses didn't seem convinced, but he agreed and asked what we needed to do to get ready. First things first, we started to clear out some of the old ruins. This was going to be the perfect place to set up our farms. We had an army to feed, so we had to make sure we had a good farm. Next, we got to work building a barracks for all of the soldiers. This would give them a place to rest and get ready for the fight ahead. I was able to get plenty of help, so we were able to finish it pretty quickly. Then I met Ramses outside. Ramses, I know living in the desert is quite a transition for you. I can build you a special place if you'd like. That is okay. I will live in a regular house like everyone else. However, I wouldn't mind helping you out with that statue. Ramses then joined me as we worked on the next part of the statue. It was really starting to come along. As we worked, I mentioned that I would go speak with the old man in the cave to see if he had any ideas. When I mentioned the old man, Ramses asked to join me, to which I agreed. We would go in the morning. Soon, the next part of the statue was complete. On days 63 to 66, Ramsey and I headed up the mountain toward the cave. As we crossed the mountaintop, we ran into a bunch of spiders. What are these spiders doing all the way up here? Ramsey's and I sprang into action, fighting them off. Working together, we were able to defeat them in no time. It was nice having a good fighter to help out. As we approached the cave, I could hear the old man's voice calling out to me. Zozo, you may enter, but only alone. Sorry, Ramses. You'll have to wait out here. Ramses agreed, and I entered the cave. I know why you've come. The pharaoh is gathering his armies, isn't he? Yes. I was hoping you might be able to help us. I thought maybe that buried item you had mentioned before might be useful at a time like this? In fact, there is a hidden item that can help, but it is not the one buried here. I will give you the directions to the cave. The old man explained where I needed to go to find this item. Excited to have a special item for the fight, I was getting ready to leave. But before you go, Zozo, I leave you with a warning. I know your community has grown, but are you sure everyone can be trusted? I nodded, but I wasn't sure what he could mean. Maybe he was talking about Ramses, but he had done more than enough to prove he wanted to help. I would keep my eye out for any suspicious villagers. Outside the cave, I told Ramses all about the item and where we needed to go. He was just as excited as me, so we headed off to find the cave. On day 67 to 70, Ramses and I had entered the cave. Soon, we saw an interesting looking statue in the middle of the tunnel. Huh, I'm surprised someone took the time to build a statue deep down in a cave like this. Suddenly, the statue sprang to life and started to attack us. It's a good thing Ramses had come with me though, as together we were able to quickly defeat it. Nice one, Ramses. Let's keep going. We continued down the tunnel and eventually saw two more statues. We stood there for a moment, waiting for the them to come to life. Huh, maybe these ones are just statues? I guess, whoa! The statues had come to life and started to attack. There were two of them this time, which made it harder than before. But even then, we still managed to fight them both off. I wonder how much deeper we have to go. I mean, what's next? Three statues? We continued until we saw a larger room. Inside was a huge statue, way bigger than the other ones. Well, I think it's clear what we have to do. Let's do this. Ramses and I got to work, attacking the big statue. His big arms landed some heavy blows as we jumped around, getting as many hits in as we could. We even had to run out of the room and hide to heal up. Thankfully though, we were able to get enough hits in and the giant statue was destroyed. As he vanished, we saw something left in his place. This must be that special item the old man was talking about. With this this, we'll be able to beat the pharaoh once and for all. Come on, Ramses, let's- Sorry, Zozo. Ramses hit me on the head, knocking me out. Before I blocked out completely, I saw him pick up the item. On day 71 to 74, I woke up to see that I was all alone. Oh, my head hurts. Ramses must have stolen the weapon and escaped. I've got to go make sure everyone is okay. I quickly ran out of the cave and headed straight to the old man. When I arrived, his cave was empty and all of his stuff was gone. Ramses must have beaten me here. What am I supposed to do now? Just then I remembered the buried item. I began digging around 
around. Surely I could use whatever this mysterious item is now. I uncovered a chest and opened it to look inside. A note. You had the power with you the whole time. Use your power of hope, will, and the strength of your people to overcome any obstacle. It's just a motivational note? I don't need that. I need a weapon that can save everyone. Oh no, everyone! I ran over to the other side of the mountain and could see our town was in flames. Why would Ramses betray us like this? I should have listened to the villagers, the old man. They were right about him. I hurried and ran down the mountain to look for survivors. As I got closer, I could see several of the villagers and the trader came running up to me. Zozo, where have you been? Ramses returned to gather all his soldiers and they all attacked. I'm so sorry. Ramses knocked me out and took the special weapon we had found. That must have been what he was using. He had some incredible abilities and had turned into a monster, but somehow we managed to push them out. I've got to stop him before he can give the item to the pharaoh. I better get to the city quick. That's the thing. I don't think he went to the city. There's a fort near here. I think you should go there to face him. I thanked the trader for his help, then went into the desert. I sure hope I can get the item back. On day 75 to 78, I could see the fort in the distance. I couldn't waste any time trying to be sneaky this time. I was charging through the front. As I entered the fort, Ramsey's soldiers tried to stop me. Good luck! You guys are all traitors! I ran through the base, using my main weapon to throw them high in the air. I felt like I was running through the base, flipping pancakes. You're gonna need a meal on this flight. One by one, I tossed the guards into the air and out of my way. At long last, I made it to the main tower and ran up the stairs. As I reached the top, Ramsey's was waiting for me. On day 79 to 84, I stood face to face with Ramsey's. He didn't look like a monster. I don't want to do this, but I can't let you go any further. Your story ends here. Ramses put on a battle helmet and attacked. Ramses, how could you betray me like this? I never wanted to betray you. In fact, I wanted to save you. You can't face my father. He'll destroy you and all the people you're fighting for. I thought if I could take the special item, you'd give up the fight. I can't stop fighting though, can I? Your father will never stop. And even if we can live in our village, there are still hundreds of people still being kept as his prisoners. Just give me the item and we can stop him together. It's too late. I've already sent it to my father. Just surrender now, and we can be done with this. I don't want to fight you, but I can't let these innocent people be captured. I'm sorry. Just then, I landed the final blow, defeating Ramses for good. In another life, maybe we could have been brothers. I hope one day we can meet again. I picked up the helmet he had dropped and put it on. It was a sad day, but it was time to save everyone. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back in the village and met up with the trader. I told him everything that had happened and that the pharaoh now had the special item. He encouraged me to keep fighting, but first, we needed to fix the village. We all got to work cleaning up the damage in the village. The soldiers had really hurt the buildings, but it wasn't anything we couldn't fix. It took a long time, but soon everything was back to normal. I then headed over to the statue and got to work finishing that up. Before I went to the city, everything needed to be properly put into place, just in case I didn't return. Soon, the statue was complete. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be the first to go on our adventures with us. On days 90 to 94, I decided to take a walk around the base. I wasn't sure what to do next. As I saw the villagers tending to their crops, I noticed the ditches they had dug to bring the water in. Suddenly, I had an idea. I hurried to tell all of the villagers my plan. With the villagers on board with my plan, I gathered up as much sand as I could. I was going to need a lot of it if this was going to work. I also went back to the pharaoh's tomb to fight more gas and collect gunpowder. As a final step, I met back up with Hugo to ask for his help. He was pretty excited about what I had in store for the pharaoh and was happy to help. All his friends agreed to help too. Alright, everything should be in place. The pharaoh better watch his back. I'm coming for him. On days 95 to 97, I made my way back to the city with Hugo and his pals. Everybody ready? Charge! I quickly put on my armor and we ran into the city. There were even more guards here than before, but they were no match for my gang of hippo pals and powerful items. The higher they go, the harder they fall. I flipped guards in the air as we made our way toward the palace. As we got closer, storm clouds began to roll in, and lightning started striking the ground. It must be the pharaoh using the special item. We have to hurry. As we ran through the square, we told as many people as we could to flee to our desert base. The lightning strikes were getting really scary and hit some of the villagers. It even hit one of Hugo's pals. Luckily, he was able to shake it off and keep going. Soon, we were at the entrance to the palace grounds. On day 98, we entered the palace grounds and began fighting our way through. It felt like there was an endless stream of guards attacking us, but they couldn't handle the strength of me and my hippo team. Hugo, you know what to do. Wait here for me. I ran into the palace and managed to fight off the guards on the first floor. All that was left was to head upstairs and face the pharaoh. Hey, hang on a second. Nubia came running over to me. Nubia, what are you still doing here? Your father has become too dangerous. I know. After you stood up to him in the arena, it inspired me to do the same. I had always felt like what he was doing was wrong, but it wasn't until then that I felt like I had the courage to say something. After I told him what I thought, he kept me trapped here in the palace. It wasn't until you stormed the palace today that my guards finally left me alone. Wow, I'm sorry to hear things have been so bad for you, but hopefully we can bring an end to it soon. If I don't make it, the people of this desert will need a strong leader like you. Stay safe until this is over. Nubia nodded and ran off to hide.
hide. It was go time. I climbed the stairs and saw the pharaoh waiting for me. So, you think having a beard makes you a man? Please. You're just the same little boy I banished into the desert. Don't bring my beard into this. You must let my people go. You can ruin my water and fill the streets with as many frogs as you want, but I will never let them be free. Just then, the pharaoh stepped forward and activated the special item. There was a burst of fire and he transformed into a giant Egyptian monster. How do you like this? I was surrounded by a ring of fire and was suddenly hit by a bunch of lightning. Oh, to be honest, I didn't really like it. I couldn't wait any longer, so I ran forward and attacked. The pharaoh hit me back, which nearly ended me in one hit. Looks like it's time for plan B. I turned and ran down the stairs and out of the palace. What's wrong? Too afraid to fight? Hugo was waiting for me and I hurried and jumped on his back as the pharaoh and his men chased after us. They were close to catching up, but we managed to stay ahead as we ran out of the city. Once we were out, Hugo really put on the speed and we got far ahead. There was a dried riverbed, which we quickly ran across. As we reached the other side, I turned to see the pharaoh and his army stop on the other side. Don't try to follow me or recapture the people. If you do, I'll have no choice but to destroy you. Destroy me? Destroy me? Ha, I don't think you're in any position to tell me what to do. The pharaoh and his army entered the riverbed, but I was ready to do my secret plan. I turned and hit a nearby button. The sound of explosions could be heard in the distance. The villagers had put TNT by the dam, which was holding back the water. No, it can't be. The water came rushing in, covering the pharaoh and his army. It looks like the plan worked. There's no way he's going to be able to escape all of that. Just then, I heard a splash behind me, and the pharaoh came rising out of the water. You may have destroyed my army, but I won't go down that easy. The river was my last plan. How was I going to defeat him now? On day 99, the pharaoh stood on the riverbank, looking down at me. Enough of these games. I won't have a little bearded man boy ruin everything I have worked so hard to build. My mind was racing. What could I do? Just then, I remembered the note I found in the old man's cave. You had the power with you the whole time. It couldn't be that simple, could it? Suddenly, a burst of lightning hit me, destroying all of my armor. What are you waiting for? I'm here to end this now. I looked at the staff I had carried with me. The staff had been with me the whole time. Now that I was a grown man with new power, I gave the cane a shake. There was a burst of light, and I grew into a massive, super buff version of myself. What? Where is this power coming from? I felt amazing. I knew that I was going to be able to fulfill my destiny. Just then, a ring of fire appeared, and the pharaoh hit me with lightning. It was on. The pharaoh and I swung our weapons, doing our best to get hits in. He was strong, but so was I. Uh, you may be bigger, but I still have my lightning. The pharaoh kept trying to hit me with lightning, but with my new abilities, I was able to dodge it. I couldn't dodge it every time, but it was clear he was running out of ideas. It was time to end this. This one is for my people. I leapt into the air and struck the pharaoh, which caused him to begin exploding. Soon, he disappeared. With the pharaoh gone, I focused my energy and returned back to my normal size. It was time to return to my people. On day 100, the world was finally free of the pharaoh's influence. I traveled to the city to meet with Nubia, who is now the ruler of the city. She was a nice ruler who let the people live freely, whether in the city or not. And she always made sure everyone was paid for their hard work. Our small village continued to grow, and I remained with those who chose to live there. Peace had been restored, and everyone could freely live their lives. On day one, I spawned in as a baby ghost. Ooh, spooky. Not as spooky as knowing I only have four hearts. Aw oh, man, wait. I'm a ghost. Why do I even have hearts? Whatever. But where are all the other ghosts? No ghost mom or ghost dad around? Since no one was around, I started checking out my new powers as a ghost. I could levitate really high and go through blocks. Wow, I passed right through that. I decided that if I was to get on in the world, I'm gonna need to find some ghost friends. The only problem was, I didn't know where any of them were. Going a bit further, I found a graveyard where a grave digger was digging. Excuse me, have you seen any ghosts around here? Just as I said that, he ran away screaming. Gee, what was that all about? I'm just a ghost. Pretty soon, the gravedigger returned with other villagers wielding torches and pitchforks. Uh-oh, time to go. The villagers chased me deeper into the forest where I managed to stay hidden for the rest of the night. On day two, I started journeying through the forest. This is gonna be hard without any gear. I gotta start crafting. I chopped down some wood and found a small cave system. In one of the small caves, I gathered up stone materials that I ended up crafting into an axe, a pickaxe, and a sword. I still haven't found any ghosts yet, but I'm sure they'll show up pretty soon. As I was gathering out materials, I could hear a raven, and I ran out only to see it stuck in what looked like a cage. Oh no! Don't worry, little raven. I'll help you. After I set her free, I asked her if she had seen any ghosts around. The raven said she had not seen ghosts in the area for a while, but mentioned there was an abandoned castle not far from here that might have a few ghosts. Perfect! A ghost in a haunted castle! How original! She also told me how thankful she was that I had saved her and hoped to repay the favor one day. Just after we parted, the villagers started attacking again. 
Ah, oh, not these guys. The raven already flew off, but luckily for me, this time I had weapons. Ha, take that. After the villagers were gone, I went deeper into the forest and continued to gather materials before going to find the castle. On day three, I finally managed to find the castle the raven had told me about. What a score. Maybe there are some ghosts in here. I checked through all the corridors and halls to see if I could find anyone. Hello, is anyone haunting here? Checking behind one of the old walls, I found a suit of armor, an iron sword, and some iron ingots. All right, now I can really do a ghost battle. I felt a surge of energy and my hearts were doubled. All right. Just then, a horde of bats flew in and started swarming me. Hey, back off, I just got this armor. It was a good thing too, because I was able to fight most of them off and the rest flew off into the night. Even though I didn't find any ghost, I decided to make the castle my base. I got to work cleaning up the cobwebs and furnituring up the place. When I was done making the place more lively, I went down a secret passageway I noticed that led downward. Maybe there are some ghosts down there. It would be fitting. On days four to five, I journeyed into the passageway to find a hidden dungeon. Ah, oh, cool, I have a dungeon. Then I heard screaming coming from one of the halls. I followed it to find a ghost being picked upon by witches. Hey, that's not nice. You leave that ghost alone. I attacked them and made swift work of them. That's right, and stay out. I went back to check on the ghost I saved and made sure he was okay. Thank you for that. If you had not come, those witches would have surely taken me to the end. No problem. Why did those witches want to take you anyways? They are the servants of the Grim Reaper, the ruler of the end who enslaves ghosts and spirits. How terrible. Well, we're safe now. What's your name? Oh, sorry. Where are my manners? My name is Gordon, and I am an organist. An organist? Wow, that's fascinating. Thank you. Unfortunately, I lost all my organs a while back. Oh, really? How far back? As long as I've been a ghost. Clever. Thank you. On day six to eight, Gordon and I got to work building back up the exterior of the castle. I made us some stronger pickaxes, and we quickly got to work gathering stone for the castle. Man, if we work any harder, we could work ourselves to death. Uh, Zozo, we're already dead. Oh yeah, that's right. We could hear a howl in the distance. Stay here, Gordon. I'll be back. I ran after the sound of the howl to see it was the villagers running after a wolf. Poor little guy, I gotta do something. Quickly, I got into action and started to attack the villagers. Pick on someone your own size, or species, or being, whatever, go away. My attack did the trick and soon they were disposed of. I turned back to check on the wolf, only to see a person standing there. Wait a moment, where's the wolf? I am the wolf, sort of. I'm a werewolf. My name is Kane. I turn into a wolf on occasions. Should I be worried about that? It's not like what you would think. It only happens when I get very emotional. I am normally very calm. Well, if you'd like, you can stay with me at my castle. I'd appreciate that very much. Thank you. Wait, you have a castle? Yeah, I am a ghost after all. On days 9 through 10, Gordon, Kane, and I made our way back and started working on the castle, furnituring up the upper floor. This looks great, guys. Good job. Yes, the extra set of hands has really been helpful, even if he has fleas. I heard that, music lover. Just as we finished, we were attacked by goblins. Sure enough, they started pelting us with orange pumpkin bombs using their trebuchets, damaging everything we have been working at. Why are you doing this to us? We just want to live in peace. A message from the Grim Reaper. No ghost or spirit is safe. Not even one with high castles. We could see a goblin begin to load up more powerful jack-o'-lantern bombs, so we ran downstairs to cover before they caused even more damage. We then ran out to assess the damage after some time had passed. The pumpkin bombs destroyed our castle. You're gonna pay for this, Grim Reaper. On days 11 through 12, Gordon Kane and I looked over what was left of our castle. I have destroyed everything, all that we have worked for. I know how you feel, Gordon. However, maybe we can remake the castle fully our own. Gordon and I left the ruins to gather more materials while Kane cleared up what was left of the old castle. After gathering some materials, we decided to rebuild. We even added new defenses so we wouldn't have to worry about being bombarded again. Zozo, you're a genius. I still think we're going to need extra help. Oh yeah? Who do you have in mind? He's an old friend of mine. He has great power among our kind. Maybe he can help us. Great. Where does he live? Go deep within the forest. There you will find trees covered with symbols. 
Find the symbol that looks like a jack-o'-lantern and open it up. Okay, seems simple enough. I'll go with you. I don't know, Kane. You can as easily be hurt. How else am I to prove my loyalty to you if I cannot be by your side? Okay, Kane. You can come with me. On days 13 to 15, Kane and I were off to find the trees Gordon had talked about. After a good deal of walking, we finally spotted an area that looked interesting. Oh, this one's shaped like a turkey. Let's go to this one. Kane, remember, Gordon said the one shaped like a jack-o'-lantern. We soon found the tree and opened the door inside of it. I felt a gust of wind when suddenly the floor opened up and we began falling. Soon enough, we landed in what appeared to be a pumpkin patch. Well, this is weird. Zozo, over here. I followed Kane to what appeared to be an old mine, but no people were around. I wonder where everyone went. No idea. Maybe we should gather some materials while we're here. That's a good idea. Right away, we started gathering more materials, including coal and even a couple diamonds. Wow, this is great. I wonder why they just left this behind. Then out of nowhere, a horde of zombies showed up and started attacking us. Ugh, I think I know where the miners went. We fought off most of them, but one of them appeared to surrender. Stop! I don't want to fight. If you'd like, I can take you to our leader. Oh, well, why didn't you just say so? Lead the way. On day 16 to 19, the zombie, whose name was Reggie, led us around his homeworld. This is the Pumpkin Kingdom, a safe haven for all things spooky. I can see that. This place is awesome. I will take you to meet the king. You can discuss with him the matter of the Grim Reaper. Great. Thank you, Reggie. Reggie led us to the palace where the Pumpkin King was seated on his throne. He was a tall, pumpkin-looking figure with big black eyes and long bony hands. Welcome, our new guests. Thank you for having us, your majesty. We have come to seek your help to defeat the Grim Reaper. The king shuddered at the mention of the Grim Reaper. Defeat that evil which tortures good spirits and enslaves souls? How I wish I could, but alas, no one can defeat that. Surely there must be something we can do. No one should have to fear this foe. Pumpkin King got up from his throne and walked towards us. I have heard of a certain item that was forged long ago. The trident made out of an unknown material they can destroy any creature, even the Grim Reaper. Great. Well, where is it? It has since been split apart, with the pieces in different locations. The Valley of Snakes, the Cave of Darkness, and the Clown Carnival. Well, that last one doesn't sound too scary. Would you be willing to go on a quest to retrieve the pieces of the Trident and fight the Grim Reaper? Me? What can I do? I'm just a ghost. Just a ghost? My dear Zozo, there is more to you than you might think. I can tell. I'm the Pumpkin King. I'm sorry, Pumpkin King, but you got the wrong ghost for this job. In time, I am sure you will understand. On days 20 to 22, Kane and I left the Pumpkin Kingdom and ended up walking through a cemetery, stopping in the middle of it to catch our breath. Zozo, why didn't you agree to find the missing pieces of the trident? I don't know, Kane. I guess I just don't feel strong enough. I know you can do it, Zozo. Pumpkin King is right. It will take time, but you will know. Just then, we heard screaming coming from a distance and ran over to see what it was. Much to my surprise, it was another gravedigger. I guess cemeteries have those. He was surrounded by giant vultures. Oh man, I might as well try to save him from becoming buzzard food. Kane and I charged the vultures and attacked them with all of our might. Get away! Get out of here! Soon enough, the vultures were gone and the gravedigger stood in shock. Thank you, Mr. Ghost thing, sir. You're welcome. And next time you see a ghost or even a werewolf, remember, they aren't all bad. Yes, sir. I will definitely remember that. I'll let the others know as well. The gravedigger ran off to tell the nearby village what had just happened. Suddenly, I started feeling weird, like a boost of energy, and I transformed into an epic level phantom. Whoa, I have 15 hearts now. Whoa, Zozo, not to be rude, but you look kind of weird. I feel kind of weird, but at the same time, I feel I need to sing. Sing? Sing about what? About how I must defeat the Grim Reaper. That's the spirit. No, now I'm a phantom. Oh, you know what I meant. Let's get on with this and head back to the castle. Agreed. On days 23 to 26, Kane and I returned to the castle, only to see it attacked by a coven of witches. Jeez, these folks do not let up. We have to help Gordon, Zozo. You're right! Quickly, we sprang into action, knocking out several witches with every stroke of our weapons. Take that, and that, and another blow for you! 
Pretty soon, all the witches were defeated, and we went to check on Gordon. Oh, thank goodness you two have finally gotten back. It's been a witcher-palooza over here. Gordon, are you all right? Has anything been damaged more? Not really. It has just been obnoxious. On the brighter side, I found one of my organs. Now, just to find the right place to put it. Well, while you do that, I'm going to start working on something. Realizing that the witches, goblins, and other bad creatures could come back, I started the process of building a statue that could be seen as a sign of goodness and security. Can you tell what it is already? After I was done building the first part of the statue, I noticed a message in the sky. Subscribe? Huh, weird message, but definitely one to listen to. On days 27 to 31, I journeyed to the Valley of Snakes to find one of the pieces of the trident. Well, this place looks eerie. As I journeyed deeper into the valley, I began to hear noises of movement around the walls. All right, I definitely need to be careful, but I have to know what's inside of this wall. What if it's what I'm looking for? I broke through the wall and fell down into a pit that had a giant pit viper in it. He charged towards me with his rapid speed, snapping his jaws and delivering some blows. Youch! I looked down and realized I had been bitten and poisoned by the pit viper. I managed to hide from him for a short while while I healed. After healing for a bit, I decided I was strong enough to face it once more, so I charged into battle. I landed some attacks, but so did the viper. He poisoned me again, so I tried to hide, but it seemed like the viper had enough. He lied down and pleaded with me to leave him alone after I re-emerged from the tunnels. Where is the piece of the trident I need? All right, I'll give it to you. Just stop hitting me. I did what the pit asked, and he proceeded to give me the missing piece. On days 32 to 35, I traveled to the village the gravedigger mentioned, where I saw the Grim Reaper and some goblins in the nearby cemetery. Oh no, I can't fight him now. I only just got the first piece of the trident. Luckily for me though, the Grim Reaper wasn't interested in attacking me. Unluckily for the village, he was interested in attacking them. I could see a group of goblins launching explosives into the village. No, don't, the people. Quickly, I sprang into action, helping where I could to put out any fires the goblins set off with their explosions. Thank you for your help, Zozo. Unfortunately, those goblins did a lot of damage to the village, and now we have no place to live. Tell you what, when you folks finish your repairs, you can all come and live with me in my castle. Wow, really? Do you mean it? Of course. It gets kind of lonely there with only a ghost organist and a werewolf. All right. Wait, a where what now? On days 36 to 39, I returned with the villagers to the castle. I always wanted to live in a castle. Maybe under different circumstances, but still, here we are. Glad I could make it all come true for you. Yeah, thanks. By the way, I hear you are looking for the lost pieces of a trident. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I found one piece of it in the Valley of Snakes after answering a riddle. Oh, really? What was the answer? Ooh. Ah, that's funny. The Pit Viper had the same response. Where will you go next to find the missing pieces? Well, according to the Pumpkin King, the other locations are a cave and a carnival. Wait, the Clown Carnival? Yeah, have you heard of it? That place is terrifying. Filled with broken down rides and creepy characters who lurk in the shadows. Yeesh, not what I was expecting. It's located right next to an old harbor where it's said that a creature lives and hunts unsuspecting visitors. Oh. Well, that isn't comforting. Take this for your journey. It may come in handy. The grave digger handed to me what appeared to be a red nose? Okay, I'm sure this will make sense in the future, but right now, I'm lost. On days 40 to 43, I was on my way through the forest when what appeared to be a group of gnats? Oh, great. I can't even see these guys. I started waving my sword all over the place, hitting whatever I could until I almost ran out of health. What am I going to do now? Suddenly, I heard the sound of flapping, and streaks of black flew in front of me. The next thing I knew, the gnats were gone. Well, that was handy. Thank you, whoever that was. You're welcome. The voice came out of nowhere, but sounded so familiar. Wait a moment, is that... It was the raven I saved from earlier. I thought I could repay the kindness you showed me earlier. Well, thank you for that. I just wish I hadn't lost my sword in the process. I may have something to help you with that. Just then, the raven revealed to me a beautiful diamond sword, fit to take on any foe. As a tribute of my loyalty and friendship, I give this to you. I shall treasure it always. Thank you, and feel free to stop by the castle whenever you'd like. On days 44 to 49, I made it to the carnival, and I have to say, it was really creepy. Man, there really are clowns all over this place. I feel like I'm being watched. While looking through the old rides and attractions, I could hear the sound of running coming from behind me. 
I turned around to see it was a boy. Watch out! The clowns are going to get us! Clowns? Oh no! Suddenly, the clown stopped watching and started attacking. Oh, come on guys, stop clowning around! The clowns were intense, swinging at us, getting a few shots in. Hey, I thought clowns were supposed to be fun! Despite their efforts to overcome, this new sword proved to be really effective, and the clowns were defeated. Once that was finally over, I went to go check on the boy. Hey, are you okay? Yes, thank you for saving me! Of course, I would be scared too if a posse of clowns were chasing me. What are you doing out here anyways? I was tricked into thinking this was a fun carnival, only to find it to be a nightmare. Uh, you're telling me. Yeah, why are you here? I'm looking for a missing piece of an ancient weapon. Supposedly it is around here somewhere. You may want to check closer to the harbor, but be careful. Unless you are a clown, I hear you could be hurt. A clown, huh? Then I remembered that I still had that red nose on me. Quickly put it on. Well, how do I look? I'm not going to answer that. Probably for the best. On days 50 to 53, I started checking out the harbor, seeing if I could find the trident piece. Couldn't find a lot, but I did manage to find some bread and cod. Ah, that hit the spot. Just as I was continuing to look around, I saw the pit viper from the valley. You. You think you can scare me away again? Well, not this time. I'll make sure you won't get that next piece of the trident. He slithered toward me, snapping his jaws and showing his venomous fangs. Back, bad snake. Don't make me defeat you again. The pit viper would hear none of it and continued trying to attack me. Little did he know my new sword was super powerful. And with some mighty blows, he was defeated for good. See you never, slither boy. After the battle, I decided to go and heal up near the water. As soon as I started eating, the whole harbor began to shake, and a giant sea monster appeared up from the water. Who dares to come into my domain? They will be ripped to... Oh, it's just another clown. What's up, my giggly friend? Uh, I was wondering if you by chance had the piece of the trident. Oh, that thing? Sure. Heck, it's been taking up room down here for a while. Keep it if you like. Gee, thanks. No problemo. Sea monster out. Just like that, he went back into the ocean. I, meanwhile, was standing there trying to comprehend what had just happened. Well, that was easy. On days 54 to 57, I brought the boy, whose name was Jamie, back to the castle. Right away, I got to work, decorating a room in the castle for him. After I was done, Kane ran in looking for me. Zozo, I'm glad I found you. I need your help, quickly. What's the issue, Kane? My werewolf friends have been captured by a group of vampires. Vampires, really? Our most deadly enemy. I need your help to free them. Please, will you help me? Of course, you lead the way. Kane and I dashed off into the forest. Soon, we saw a spooky looking structure in front of us. This must be the place. Kane transformed into his wolf form and we went inside. We explored it room by room until we reached the top where I could see the werewolves caged up and surrounded by a bunch of vampires. Okay, we need to think of a plan to fight them. If we can just... Let's go! No wait, Kane! Kane charged towards the vampires and I was following quickly behind. We fought hard against the vampires, but they seemed near invincible. Man, these guys are hard to beat. You're telling me it's like they don't have any weaknesses. Wait, that's it, weaknesses. Quick, follow me. Both Kane and I ran outside as the vampires chased after us. The vampires were so busy fighting us, they didn't realize they were walking into a trap. The moment they stepped into the sunlight, the vampires simply vanished into dust. Look. I think one of them dropped something. I picked it up and it was a vial of green liquid. Vampire serum. Use on an enemy to control them to your will. I'll definitely be using this in the future. On days 58 to 62, I continued to work on the statue. Can you tell what it is yet? Just as I was admiring the statue, I heard a large explosion coming from the castle. Oh no, what is happening now? I turned around and saw that the castle was under attack. Witches, goblins, and vultures, oh my. Quickly, I sprang into battle, chopping at any witch or goblin I saw. Take that and some of that. Ooh, and you get some too. My friends joined me outside and suddenly a black cloud appeared, revealing the Grim Reaper. He produced a massive sickle and with an extremely powerful blow, took down all the villagers and werewolves. Come to me. All of a sudden, the spirits of the fallen rose up from their bodies and entered into the cloud with the Grim Reaper. We will return. Just like that, the Grim Reaper vanished. Suddenly, I could see Gordon rushing up to me. 
Zozo, you must come quick. It's Kane. He has been badly injured. Gordon led me over to where Kane was, and I could tell he was not all right. Kane, speak to me. It's going to be all right. Oh, Zozo, I am so sorry. You have nothing to be sorry about. You fought bravely. That's all anyone could ever ask. I just hope that I was truly loyal and a good friend. You were the best, buddy. The most loyal and true friend any ghost could ever ask for. Kane appeared to smile. He then closed his eyes and was no more. On day 63 to 66, we buried the fallen from the previous battle. Goodbye, Kane. Thank you for believing in me. While we were all in a time of mourning, I was surprised to see the Pumpkin King come and call me over to him. It is good to see you, Pumpkin King. I just wish it were for different circumstances. So do I, Zozo. However, I do come bearing some good news. Oh, really? What may that be? My researchers have found the location of the Cave of Darkness, and we have also found this key, which is said to unlock the final piece of the trident. The Pumpkin King told me the directions to the cave and gave me the key to take with me. Stay strong, Zozo. It is said that the cave is guarded by cave trolls who are known to be strong in their attacks. I will be. Thank you for this useful knowledge. Unfortunately, just as we thought things couldn't be going worse, another swarm of bats tried to attack us. Really? This is not a good time. Just as the bats were attacking, the Pumpkin King screamed an awful scream that ultimately shook them up and made them faint. Whoa, how did you do that? Well, you don't think I'm called the Pumpkin King without having a few tricks up my sleeve. That's fair. Can you teach me that? Huh, maybe someday. Right now, you've got a journey ahead of you. Right. Thanks again. On day 67 to 70, I finally made it to the location of the Cave of Darkness. There appeared to be guards posted near the entrance in the cave, but these weren't just any guards. Trolls! Mountain trolls! They're even bigger than cave trolls! I quickly began thinking about how I could either distract or defeat those guys. Then I noticed the gravel hanging over the top of the cave ceiling. After noticing that they aren't going to move, I pondered my options and decided to mine out the ceiling and make the gravel fall. Incoming! The gravel came crashing down, crushing the trolls upon impact. Well, that was pretty easy. Just then, I heard footsteps and a larger troll came running over. He looked like the leader and must have heard the noise. With no other alternative, and now in plain sight, I decided I had to fight him. This is gonna hurt. Indeed it did. His blows were so powerful that I was losing hearts left and right. Ah, it's a good thing I'm fast. Just as I feared he was about to deliver the final blow, I thought about Cain and how much he had sacrificed. I couldn't lose now, not this time. I built up my courage and was able to fight back even harder than before. Soon, I had won. Then I was off to explore the Cave of Darkness. On day 71 to 74, I delved into the Cave of Darkness, looking for the last piece of the trident. Man, this place is dark. Oh wait, the Cave of Darkness. Yeah, that really makes sense now. Continuing on, I could see a big door with a lock on it, guarded by a cave troll. It got to get past him somehow. I pondered the situation, then I thought of something. I hid behind a rock and shouted out loud, Hi! Free pie! Everybody, free pie! The troll looked around, then took off running, right past me. Well, everybody knows you can't resist free pie. I ran over to the door and went to the lock. The key fit perfectly, and with a turn of the key, I opened the door. Finally, what I needed all along. As soon as I opened it, I saw... The piece was gone! What? How is that possible? Right where the piece was, there was a note. I took it and read the following message. Looks like you're too late. Did you really think you could beat me? The Grim Reaper must have beaten me to it. I had to find him, and quickly! On day 75 to 78, I returned back to the castle, where I could see everyone had built some stables and a farm next to the castle. This is great! Hopefully nothing will stop us now. I could see Gordon playing music on the piano. I know it's not much, but music can truly make a difference. I'll take your word for it. I'm just glad everyone is working together. Oh, by the way, the Pumpkin King was here before you returned. He wanted me to give this to you. I opened up the Pumpkin King's gift, and it was a whole new suit of armor. It even came with a new ability, Ghost Whale. This is awesome. I was definitely going to be using this for the future. Oh, that reminds me. What did you find in the cave? Well, before I could even talk, a thunderous sound came from outside the castle. It was the troll, and he looked angry. There was no free pie. You owe me a pie. Oh boy, I knew this would come back to haunt me. 
Right away, I jumped down from the castle to reason with him, but he wasn't having any of it. He started to attack me with all of his might, and I was really starting to think that this was the end. Just then, I remembered I still had the vampire serum. I equipped it so that with the next blow I made, it would be under my control. I laid a hit on him, and he stopped trying to fight me. Ha! Huh, all right then. Tell me, where has the Grim Reaper hidden the last piece of the trident? It's located at the old farm, guarded by the maniac. The maniac? Who's he? Oh, he's just this tall, masked creature who hunts people with chainsaws. Oh boy, when will these adventures ever get easy? On day 79 to 84, I made it to the old farm to look for the last piece of the trident. Hello, any maniacs here with a chainsaw I should know about? While well, checking the area and making sure there weren't any maniacs around, I could hear the sound of someone asking for help coming from the farmhouse. I looked inside and saw it was Iron Man. Iron Man, why would you need my help? Wait, do you think I'm the real Iron Man? I knew this suit was convincing. This is just my Halloween costume. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Wait, I don't see any kids around. Are you an adult that still goes trick-or-treating? Yeah, so I'm an adult who likes to get free candy. Big deal. But look, did you see that mask over there? The one by the mailbox? Yeah. If you could hand that over to me, I would really appreciate it. Why don't you just go get it yourself? Are you crazy? There's a maniac out there. I figured if I could get my mask, maybe he wouldn't attack me because he thought I was the real Iron Man. Well, that's not the worst plan, I guess. You tricked me. Hang on a second. I ran over to the mailbox and quickly picked up the mask. I returned to the door to give the man the mask. Okay, before you go, I need to ask a couple questions. All right, mask first, please. Fine, I'm looking for a missing piece of an ancient weapon I need. Have you seen anything like that? Just then, I heard what could only be called dark laughing coming from outside. Sounds like it's time for you to go. The trick-or-treater jumped up and ran out the back door. I ran back outside and saw the Grim Reaper hovering above the barn. Foolish ghost, did you really think it would be that easy? Easy? No part of this was really easy. Where's that missing piece, Reaper? Oh, do you mean this? The Grim Reaper revealed the last piece. It was the one that had all the spears at the end. I hope you have enjoyed your journey, little ghost. Now prepare to watch it crumble to pieces. In his hand, the Grim Reaper destroyed the last piece of the trident, breaking it to pieces on the ground. No, you villain! Yeah, that's kind of the point. Oh, and there's someone in here who is just crazy about meeting you. Good luck trying to fight off this maniac. <laughs> In an instant, the Grim Reaper was gone, but now I had a new enemy to face. The door of the house next to the barn broke to reveal the maniac I had heard so much about. He ran towards me, his chainsaw in hand. I thought quickly, then I remembered the Pumpkin King's gift of the ghost whale. As the maniac grew closer, I yelled as loud as I could, letting loose a great big force from my mouth, like a powerful wind. It knocked the maniac off his feet and took him out. I ran over to where he had come from and saw he had another chainsaw in a crate. I picked it up, along with the pieces of the trident the Grim Reaper had left behind. Maybe there's something I can still do with this. On days 85 to 89, I was heading through the forest when who should I see but Reggie, the zombie miner from the Pumpkin Kingdom. Reggie, it's good to see you, but what are you doing here? I was sent by the Pumpkin King to tell you more information about the end. There is a portal that can transport you there. Well, that's great, but what will I need? You will need at least 12 eyes of Ender. Only then can the portal truly work. That's good, only there's one problem. I don't have any of those. I was thinking that was going to be a problem, so I proceeded to take the liberty in giving you these. He then tossed out 12 eyes of Ender. Thank you, Reggie. This is extremely helpful. What can I say? I'm a miner. I know how to find things. Well, is there any way you can find a way to fix this? I proceeded to show Reggie the broken pieces of the trident head. I will take these back to the Pumpkin King. Hopefully something can be done about them. Quickly. Appreciate that immensely, Reggie. The quicker we act, the quicker we can defeat the Grim Reaper once and for all. On days 90 to 94, I started to get ready for my final journey. 
Gordon found some new iron ingots, which I forged to make new weapons and armor. I then gave all the new equipment to my friends. Ah, cool. A gift of armor from a ghost. The things you never expect to say. A little while later, while I was resting upstairs, I could see Jamie approaching me, looking very pleased with himself. Jamie, what happened? I ended up going back to the carnival in Harbor to see if I could gather any more materials and also face my fears. I'm proud of you, Jamie. Well, what did you get? Jamie placed down a shulker box and I looked inside. It was full of netherite ingots. Jamie, how did you acquire all of this? I went up to the sea monster, asked him if he had anything that was strong, and he gave me these. All right, but how? Simple, I just wore a red nose. All in all, the sea monster is a pretty chill dude, as long as you have the nose, of course. With the netherite ingots, I quickly got to upgrading all my armor and weapons. If I'm going to the end, I'm gonna need all the help I can get. On days 95 to 97, I finally finished the statue. I'm sure you can tell what it is now. It's a jack-o'-lantern. Traditionally, they were used to ward off any evil spirits from invading one's home, which is exactly why I wanted to create it. After all the attacks by witches and goblins and things, sometimes it's good to defend oneself in a more classic way. I went to admire it in all of its glory. Hello, jack-o'-lantern. Hello. Ah, I didn't know you could talk. You never asked. That's fair. So, how's life? Life is Gord. Uh -huh. Life is Gord. Get it? Yep, yep, got it. Well, this has been fun. I should probably get going. Leaving so soon? Don't you want my spooky blessing? Just then, some particles appeared around me, and I gained ten more hearts. Whoa, thanks. I'm feeling really gored now. The pumpkin was silent for a moment. Let me handle the gourd puns. Sure, sure, whatever you say. On day 98, I exited the castle and went to go look for the end portal frame. Suddenly, I could see what looked like a miner in a distance. Right away, I knew it was Reggie. Oh, great! Maybe he has the completed trident head. Quickly, I ran to greet him, hoping in my heart that he had what I needed. Reggie! Zozo, I just got the chance to meet your jack-o'-lantern. Funny guy. The king will really get a kick out of him. That's fine, but did you manage to get the trident head fixed? That's why I wanted to meet you in person. It's almost done, but it will take a little longer. We don't have much longer, though. Tell the Pumpkin King to get that piece finished as quickly as possible, and then make sure you deliver it to me in the end as soon as you can. All right, I will. Reggie left, and it was time to go to the end. I started throwing out Eyes of Ender, which led me across the land. Eventually, the eye stopped and I started to dig down, entering the stronghold. I found the portal and filled in the missing Eyes of Ender. Suddenly, the portal awoke. All right, Grim Reaper, here I come. On day 99, I finally managed to enter the end. Well, this is trippy. Gathering my surroundings, I could see what appeared to be a cage. Looking closer, I could see it was filled with several ghosts and spirits. No, my people! Quickly, I rushed over toward it, but was attacked by the skeletons that were guarding it. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. One by one, I fought and defeated each of the skeletons. Ha! Better luck next time, bone bags! Eventually, I got to the cage, but there was a big lock on the front of it. How am I gonna get these ghosts out of here? I could hear them pleading for me to break them out, talking about the lock. I know, I know, I saw, I saw! Wait a minute, saw. Then I remembered I still had the maniac's chainsaw from earlier. I don't know if this will work, but I have to try. I ran over to the lock and with the chainsaw, used it to try and cut the lock open. It was definitely taking a while for the lock to break and depleting the strength of the chainsaw. Man, this thing is strong. Fortunately, the chainsaw worked and the lock was broken. Go, be free. The spirits flew out of the cage in a fury. I felt relieved when I saw that every single one had left the cage. Now, on to the big guy. On day 100, I continued fighting my way through the end. More goblins started to attack me, but using the ghost well, I quickly managed to defeat them. Let that be a lesson to you. No matter what creatures tried to fight me, I managed to press on to the final battle. Come on, Reaper, I don't fear you. Eventually, I appeared to have found what could only be called a massive structure that housed a throne room. The Grim Reaper sat on a throne, wielding a giant sickle. So, have you come to die? I have come to defeat you once and for all. 
Well, first, you'll have to find me. With the snap of his bony fingers, the Grim Reaper was gone, and a swarm of zombies charged towards me. Back! Back! Go rob somewhere else! The zombies appeared to be no problem, but I still didn't know where the Grim Reaper went. Having fun? The Grim Reaper appeared again. Huh, I have not yet begun to fight. This is pointless. You know you cannot defeat me. I destroyed your last chance. Zozo! I turned around and saw Reggie standing behind me in the doorway. He threw something on the ground. It was the completed trident. I ran over and picked the trident up. Thanks, Reggie. Now get out of here. Reggie nodded and quickly ran off. Oh, and what has your little friend brought you now? You're doomed. I pointed the complete trident towards him. Just as I did, I could feel a power up and I transformed into a supreme level spirit. The Grim Reaper shrieked at the sight of this, then lunged towards me with his sickle. The fight was momentous, with the Grim Reaper blinding me and using special attacks, and me blocking every harsh blow he tried. Little by little, I jabbed at him with the trident. No one can defeat me. Oh yeah? Well, I just did. With one final blow, I thrusted the trident into the chest of the Grim Reaper. He let out a wicked yell, and at last, he was defeated. With the battle won, I left the end and traveled back to my base. Back at the castle, everyone was there. They all cheered that the Grim Reaper had been defeated and that his minions could no longer torment us. The land was safe once more. On day one, I spawned into the autumnal valley as an itty bitty baby Steve. Ah, this is no fun. Who wants to be a baby? I'm so small and weak. At least the valley was peaceful and I was surrounded by adorable fluffy mystery sheep. They comforted me in my frightened baby state. Suddenly, a huge gold-plated bully walks towards me. Just seeing him made me feel nervous. Well, looky here, if it isn't the new meat. A silly little baby, thinking he can just wander around the fields. But I'm Midas, and these are my fields, dork. And there are no babies allowed. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, mister. I didn't mean to trespass. My name's Zozo. I'm just trying to understand what's happening here. Zozo? Nah, I'm gonna call you Bozo from now on. That's much more fitting for a silly little baby clown like you. Why are you so mean? Cause when you're the strongest, you get to be mean, like this. He fired an energy blast that vaporized all the mystery sheep around me. I was horrified by it all. That's gonna happen to you too over the next hundred days, unless you get strong too. I'm gonna get you, bozo. I felt so mad about how he treated me, but I wasn't strong enough to fight back. All I could do was run away as fast as I could. I don't care what he says. I will get strong enough to stand up for myself in 100 days. On day two, I continued running through the autumnal field and didn't stop until I was absolutely sure that Midas the bully wasn't somewhere behind me. Phew, that was a close one. I only have five hearts, so I can't afford to let someone as powerful as him get the jump on me like that. I still feel terrible for those mystery sheep, though. My knees started to hurt from all the running, so I started crawling around. The autumnal valley didn't seem so sweet and peaceful anymore. To a little baby like me, everything seemed almost too scary to handle. I hope I can find someone around here who will agree to help me. But because I wasn't very lucky, I instead ran into a group of mean-looking skeleton jackals. Excuse me, guys, but would any of you be able to help a little baby like me? I'm lost and afraid. But the skeleton jackals just started laughing and laughing. Oh, this is priceless. What a little baby dork. You must be Bozo. Midas told us all about you when he sent us out to look for the little lame-o who was trespassing in his valley. What? You work for Midas the Bully? But why? He's so mean. Sure, he's mean. But if you side with the bully and help him bully others, then they won't bully you. That's a terrible message. We should all stick up for each other. Ha! <laughs> Spoken like a true bozo. Let's get him, boys. I had to run away again because there was no way I could take those guys on. It made me feel so weak and cowardly, but there was nothing else I could do. When I outran the skeleton jackals, I stopped in a clearing to cry. That's when a friendly pig wearing a crown approached me. Are you all right there, little one? No, I'm not. I've only been here for two days, and everyone is mean to me. Oh, that's no good. 
I'm the King Pig, and I won't stand for any of that sort of rubbish in my kingdom. Come with me, little one. Uh, okay. So I followed the King Pig out of the Autumnal Valley. On day three, the King Pig led me out into the Blue Taiga, where there was a small school building. Do not worry, little Zozo. This is the Blue Taiga School. It is a safe place for children, and a good friend of mine runs it. I entered the school, and that good friend turned out to be the Water Elemental, the teacher who taught anyone passing through the Blue Taiga. Good heavens, you poor thing! Look at you! I'm so sorry that some of the people you've met in the overworld have treated you poorly, Zozo. But I promise that you will always have a safe place here. Thank you, Mr. Water Elemental. It was also very kind of the King Pig to bring me here. It makes me feel a whole lot better after my incident with Midas the Bully and all his goons. Midas, a truly nasty man. An ex-student of mine, actually. I expelled him from the school years ago for bullying other students. As sad as I am to say it, I don't think he'll ever change. What do you think I should do, teacher? Honestly, little Zozo, I think the ultimate solution is to train hard enough that you're strong enough to defeat him for the sake of everyone. There's a nice place called the Amaranth Fields near here that might be a good spot to begin your work. Thank you, Mr. Water Elemental. I won't let you down. So King Pig and I set off for the Amaranth Fields, ready to begin the process of taking Midas the Bully down once and for all. From day four to day five, King Pig and I arrived at the Amaranth Fields. There were enough wide open plains for it to be perfect to make a base. But first, I broke down a tree and made myself a crafting bench and a wooden pickaxe. Then mined into the ground for my first stone blocks. Now I'm feeling less like a baby already. I built myself a furnace, a stone pickaxe, and a stone sword. Uh, King Pig, your highness, is it all right for a baby to hold a sword? It's okay with adult supervision, Zozo. And I'm 47. Well, okay then. I continued mining and collecting stone and wood until I had enough to start building a basic base with a room for me and a room for King Pig. It wasn't much, but it will be enough for now. This base is looking good, Zozo. It's not quite fit for a king just yet, but you're getting there. Then, a problem came up. A small swarm of golden devourers tried attacking my base, and I was forced to use my sword to fight them all off. Get out of here, you nasty little critters. I've had enough meanies this week. But when they were defeated, something amazing happened. I had enough XP to level up, becoming a slightly bigger baby with 20 hearts and the ability to crawl up walls. I guess it makes sense for a baby to be really good at crawling. From day six to day eight, given a little more confidence by my new power and new hearts, I decided to venture out to the mangrove marshes where I could hopefully learn more about being strong and tough. It seemed like a nice enough place until I saw an ancient Egyptian guy being attacked by a nasty bunch of sectoid soldiers. I couldn't let them get away with that. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Baby to the rescue. I pulled out my stone sword and ran in, defeating all the sectoid soldiers with the element of surprise. When I was done, it was just me and the ancient Egyptian left. Thank you very much, my friend. I'm Seth. You saved my life just then. Don't mention it, Seth. I'm Zozo, and I'm just trying to learn to be stronger, so any combat experience is helpful. Well, in that case, we may be able to help each other. You see, Zozo, you may think this is bad, but there's a far worse pest problem out in the Cypress Swampland. Think you can help me deal with it? Of course. Lead the way, Seth. So Seth led the way, and I followed him. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Seth out into the Cypress Swamplands, ready to take on whatever pest problem he was dealing with. I mean, it's only bugs. How scary can it really be? I changed my tune when I saw the pest that Seth was talking about. A giant, terrifying mummy scorpion. Okay, this may be a bit more challenging than I thought. While Seth stood back in the shadows, I pulled out my stone sword and ran into battle with the mummy scorpion. But my sword strikes didn't do any damage. But when the mummy scorpion hit back, it took off several hearts in one hit. I needed to get out of there as quickly as possible. I ran away from the angry mummy scorpion, yelling for my life until I was out of there. Seth was waiting for me. So, Zozo, did you manage to defeat the mummy scorpion? I'm so sorry, Seth, but I'm still too much of a baby to defeat him. Want to come back to my base in the meantime? I'm sure we can get something figured out. 
Thank you, Zozo. That's very kind of you. I'll follow you back. And with that, we headed back towards my base in the Amaranth Fields. From day 11 to day 12, I arrived back at my base with Seth and immediately started working on adding an additional house for him to sleep in. Having two of my new friends here definitely makes me feel safer. After all, baby shouldn't be left alone for too long. Once I was done with Seth's room, he came over to me to share some exciting news. Zozo, since you were so kind as to let me stay on your base with you, I took the liberty of building you a little upgrade. Come with me, I'll show you. Oh, Seth, you really shouldn't have. That's just too kind of you. He led me over to a new room he'd created, a super cool storage area where we could keep gear, weapons, and supplies. This is awesome, Seth, thank you. This room is gonna come in so handy. Perhaps more than you even know, Zozo. I've come to understand that Midas the bully is after you. Don't let the juvenile name fool you. He's an extremely dangerous fighter and magic user. To take him on, you're going to need the best weapons you can muster. Feeling inspired by Seth's words of warning, I made my way to a deep cave not far from my base and started mining. There, I found some iron ore, which I took back to the furnace on my base and smelted into iron ingots. Before I knew it, I had an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. A baby with an iron sword. This is just crazy, but I guess I'll go with it. And of course, a sword is no good if you don't have supplies. That's why I made a paddock on my base and herded some mystery sheep into it. After all, you never know when you're gonna need the wool. From day 13 to day 15, I wasn't sure what I needed to do to get stronger, so I went to my oldest friend, King Pig. Your Majesty, I'm not sure how to get strong enough to defeat Midas the Bully. I know I've got a better sword now, but I'm still a tiny, weak baby. Well, one of the best ways to grow big and strong is to have a healthy diet, my boy. And for what it's worth, I've heard the delicious apples on the Dover Mountains have particularly special properties. Then I'll head straight to the Dover Mountains. Thank you, King Pig. But the journey up and into the Dover Mountains wasn't easy. Thankfully, due to my climbing ability, I didn't fall, but it still took me a whole day just to get up there. And when I did, I noticed something terrible. There were apple trees, but no apples. Where could they have gone? That's when I turned and saw a massive skulk scorpion creeping towards me. Oh no, the scorpion must have eaten all the apples. It attacked me and I needed to fend it off with my new iron sword. It was hard work for a little baby, but I still managed to defeat it. And when it went down, it dropped a special Dover Mountain apple. Time for a post-victory snack. When I ate the apple, I immediately started growing and becoming more powerful. I now had 50 hearts and the ability to quickly build walls. I'm one buff baby now. From day 16 to day 19, I wanted to go somewhere a little less challenging than the Dover Mountains, so I settled for the charming Evergreen Hills instead. Wow, the scenery here is lovely. If only I had a book to just sit around and read, this would be the perfect afternoon. And as if by magic, I ran into a book on the ground. I picked it up and saw that its title was The Tragedy of Midas. This sounds like an educational read. I started reading a passage that said, Once, the one known as Midas was small and weak. He was picked on and grew despite everyone around him. He got strong and grew his fortune, covering himself in gold. He then became a bully himself, just like the ones who bullied him. But my reading was interrupted by a gang of Midas the Bully's skeleton jackals that came towards me. <laughs> Look at that nerd, reading. How'd you like that book, bozo? Is it teaching you how to be less lame? Oh, it's teaching me that your boss is even more small and insecure than I thought. Hey, nobody gets to talk about Midas that way. He's the number one bully around here. Let's get him, boys. The skeleton jackals attacked me, but this time I wasn't going to run away. With my iron sword, I took them on and defeated every last one of them. When I'm done, their number one bully is gonna be the world's biggest zero. From day 20 to day 22, while wandering back towards my baits in the Amaranth Fields, I was attacked by a group of feral swamp spiders. Thankfully, I was able to defeat them easily with how strong I was getting now. No spider is tough enough to defeat Zozo, even as a little baby. After defeating the swamp spiders, I returned to the deep cave near my base where I mined some more iron ore. I took it back to my base and used the furnace to smelt it. Then I crafted it into a full set of iron armor. 
gotta stay safe out there. With my new sword and my new armor, and with the knowledge that I'd already beaten a Skulk Scorpion, I went all the way back to the Cypress Swamplands to settle an old score, defeating the Mummy Scorpion. He won't chase me away this time. I tracked down the Mummy Scorpion, and this time I defeated him easily. I felt on top of the world, knowing Seth was going to be so proud of me, until Midas the bully himself stepped out of the trees. Feel like a big man for wasting some goofy spider, huh, Bozo? You're still just a tiny little baby to me. Midas, why don't you come over here and fight me rather than just calling me mean names? Fight you? <laughs> Kid, I'd squish you like a bug. And believe me, I will someday, but not yet. I want you to become more of a challenge first. Later, Bozo. Midas ran away before I could say another word to him. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to my base, feeling upset for my encounter with Midas, but proud of myself for finally defeating the Mummy Scorpion. I approached Seth with the good news. Seth, I defeated the Mummy Scorpion. The Cypress Swamplands are now clear of monsters. That's fantastic, Zozo. Thank you so much. I'm going to do something to repay you for this. Stay tuned. While Seth went to work on some mysterious project, I decided it was now time to improve my sword. I repaired it and applied the fire aspect enchantment, giving my sword a fiery power boost. Once the upgrade on my awesome sword was done, Seth came and led me over to his gift. He'd built a secret underground safe room under the base. Now, if anyone attacks and they're too strong to fight off, we can hide down here and we'll be safe until they leave. This is an amazing upgrade, Seth, and hopefully we'll never need to use it. From day 27 to day 31, I went back out to the Evergreen Hills where I'd defeated those evil skeleton jackals before, hoping to find something else of use there. Instead, I found a small group of sky lizards sitting around, looking relieved. You! Are you the one they call, uh, Bozo? It's Zozo, actually. Well, Zozo, we wanted to thank you. We heard that you destroyed a group of skeleton jackals here, and those skeleton jackals had been hassling us for years. We just wanted to say thank you. No problem. I just wanted to do the right thing. I'm glad everything is okay now. Ah, uh, well, not exactly everything is okay. We've been hassled by other creatures and monsters too. It's hard to live out here. Then why don't you come live with me for a while? At least until I've defeated Midas the Bully. Thank you, Zozo. We'll head over there immediately. I went back to the base too and decided to get some much needed rest by sitting down on a nearby hill and enjoying the view of my base. Just as I was standing back and appreciating my hard work, King Pig ran over to me in a panic. Zozo, we need to go to the Blue Tiger School immediately. Something terrible is happening. From day 32 to day 35, King Pig and I ran to the Blue Tiger School as fast as we could. But it may have already been too late. The Blue Tiger School was under attack from a swarm of skeleton jackals sent directly by Midas the Bully. Oh no, we need to stop them. I ran in to help, attacking the different skeleton jackals, but I couldn't save the Water Elemental. He was destroyed in the confusion. No, Water Elemental. I went into full rage mode after that, taking out every single one of the skeleton jackals. But even though they were gone, there was no bringing back the water elemental. I'm sorry, King Pig, we lost him. This is a truly terrible day, Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, I went back to the mangrove marshes. I needed to be alone and clear my head. I still felt so guilty about not being able to save the water elemental. But then, as I was traveling through the marshes, I happened upon an air elemental, and he looked like he needed help. He reminded me of my old elemental friend, so I really wanted to see if I could help out. I've lived in these marshes for years, but recently a bubble monster moved in, and it's been ruining everything. I may need your help to stop it, Zozo. Of course, Air Elemental. I'll go see what I can do. I ran deeper into the marshes, excited by the thought that I might be able to do a good deed and make a difference. I'm coming for you, bubble monster. When I found the beast, it didn't take long to defeat, especially with the fire aspect enchantment on my sword. Once this dirty bubble was defeated, I ran back to the air elemental as fast as I could. You have done me a great kindness, Zozo. In return, I will give you one cryptic clue. Midas lurks in a forgotten place. 
And with that, the air elemental disappeared. And he was right. That was a very cryptic clue. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to my base and found that King Pig had made an amazing improvement to my base. A statue of the water elemental so we would always remember him. That was so kind of you, King Pig. If the water elemental was here, he'd really appreciate this. Thank you, Zozo. Also, I was wondering if I could ask a favor. My friends, the gold pigs, need to leave my kingdom for a while to be safe from Midas. Can they stay here until we've defeated him? Of course they can. Call them over whenever you're ready, your majesty. And he did. A day later, a group of gold pigs arrived and came to stay in the new house that King Pig had created for them. So many people live here now. It makes me feel so safe. Speaking of people who lived in my base now, one of the sky lizards ran over to me with some exciting news. Zozo, you must head to the flowering ancient forest at once. We believe that Midas the Bully is already there. From day 44 to day 49, I followed the tip from the sky lizard and traveled to the flowering ancient forest to find Midas the Bully. As I was looking for him, Midas himself jumped out from behind a tree. Well, if it isn't Bozo! What's up, little clown? <laughs> I'm not a clown, and you know my name is Zozo. You've been pushing everyone around for too long. We'll see how funny you think it is when I finally stop you from bullying everyone. Pfft. Yeah? Good luck with that, clown. You see my gold armor? No one can get me when I'm wearing this. And once I've got my hands on all the gold, no one will ever be able to stand up to me. All the gold? You're just going to steal it? I'm gonna make everyone so afraid of me that they'll just hand it over like the sad little cowards they are. That's terrible. Too bad, so sad. Anyway, wish I could stick around to kick your butt, but that would be a waste of my time. I'll have my buddy here do it instead. Come on out, Horace. Who's Horace? Me. Horace appeared out of nowhere and Midas ran off. Uh-oh, this guy seems pretty strong. I knew I was in for a tough fight. From day 50 to day 53, I started my battle against Horus in the flowering ancient forest. He was a lot more powerful than I expected, but I was still holding my own. I had enough yet, bozo. No way, I'm not backing down. Then I guess I'll just have to make you. He hit me hard, knocking me back, and I almost fell over. But I got my balance back and came back at him just as hard. The fire aspect enchantment on my sword helped me finally defeat him, and I took a second to catch my breath. That was a close one. Hey, what's that? Looks like he dropped something. There was a baseball bat on the ground. I've heard these can freeze mobs for a couple of seconds. This is gonna be super useful. I also spotted a part of a book. Hey, this looks like a page from a diary. It says Midas on it. Dear diary, I sure hope no one finds out the reason I wear all of this armor. I'm not a very good fighter. I'm just good at dodging and taking lots of damage. If someone found a way to freeze me or damage my armor, I'd be in big trouble. Good thing I'll never tell anyone my secret. Oh boy, I'm glad I found this. From day 54 to day 57, I got ready to head back to my base. But as I was preparing to leave the flowering ancient forest, an ender creeper ambushed me. Ah, you get out of here, don't blow up on me. I used my new bat to freeze the ender creeper for a few seconds, giving me plenty of time to defeat it before it could explode. This bat is pretty awesome. When I beat it, the ender creeper dropped a potion of strength. I picked it up. Great, I can take this back to my base. With my new bat and my potion of strength, I headed back to my base to tell my friends all about it. I found the sky lizard waiting for me there. Hi, Zozo, how did it go? I couldn't defeat Midas yet, but I got this bat and this potion, and I learned some new information that I think will help. That's great news. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to take time to make some improvements to my base. I expanded my paddock to make room for more sheep. We're gonna have so much wool, sweaters for everyone, or whatever else we can make with it. Speaking of which, come here, little sheep. Let's give you a haircut. I harvested some wool from the mystery sheep. When I was done with that, I decided to keep the resource gathering train going. I headed down into the mines in the deep cave and started digging. Phew, mining sure is hard work, but it's worth it. As soon as I said that, I found some diamonds. I gathered them and brought them back to my base. 
I was able to use the diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. I'm making great progress. Look out, Midas. We'll see how your gold does against my diamonds. One of the sky lizards came up to me as I finished crafting my diamond gear. Zozo, come look. I added some more bedrooms to the base in case any more friends need to come and stay here. I followed him and saw all the rooms he had added onto the base. Wow, this must have taken ages. Thank you so much. Anyone who needs a safe place to hide from Midas the bully can come here now. With the help of my friends, even though I'm a baby, I feel big and strong. From day 63 to day 66, Seth approached me at the base. Zozo, I have information about where Midas might have gone. I heard he likes to stomp on flowers, big meanie that he is. Is there anywhere with lots of pretty flowers he might have gone to? Hmm, I don't know. Wait a second, maybe you should check the flowering enchanted forest. I traveled to the flowering enchanted forest and kept my eyes peeled for the glint of gold that meant Midas the bully was hiding there. I didn't see Midas, but I did see a fire elemental running right at me. Zozo, is that you? Oh geez, no, it's Zozo! I grabbed my sword. I guess you're here to fight me for Midas, huh? What? No, I'd never work for that guy. I heard you were someone to go to for help. I need help getting this ghost miner to leave me and my family alone. He's trying to kick us out of our house and wants us to give him all of our gold. That's despicable. He must be working for Midas. Don't worry, I'll see what I can do. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the fire elemental to his house. Sure enough, there was a ghost miner trying to break down one of the walls. Looks like my grandma is still inside. Hurry, please. Hold on, Granny Fire Elemental. I'm coming. I got my sword ready and rushed towards the ghost miner. He was chipping away at the wall of the house, but when he saw me coming, he stopped and turned his focus on me. He was strong, definitely the strongest enemy I'd fought so far, but I still managed to finally defeat him. It's safe now. No one will try to destroy your home again. Thank you, Bozo. I'll never forget what you did for us today. No problem. My name is Zozo, though. Could you spread the word? Minus the bully started calling me the wrong name, and I really don't want it to stick. I may be a baby, but I'm no clown. You got it. It's the least I can do. If you ever need a fire elemental, you know where to find me. Or you can just come over for dinner sometime. Yum! Sounds like a plan. From day 71 to day 74, I kept exploring the flowering enchanted forest, keeping an eye out for smushed flowers. I know if I see something that's messed up, Midas can't be far. As I walked, taking in the beautiful scenery, a bee came buzzing by me. Hello, little bee. Hello, Zozo. Say, if you're enjoying this adventure and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and find other adventures by searching ZOZO. Anyway, I've got to buzz off. Bye! Thanks for the tip, B. Now, back to searching for that bully. Talking about me, Bozo? I could see Midas just up ahead of me, stomping on a flower. Why would you destroy something so pretty? These flowers aren't hurting anyone. Flowers are for losers and dweebs. Who needs them? You probably love flowers, don't you, Bozo? I could stomp on you just like these flowers. You're just as weak. No, I'm not. I'm getting stronger all the time. Huh. Oh, yeah? You think you're strong enough to fight me? I tried to get my bat so I could freeze him for a few seconds, but I wasn't quick enough. He rushed at me and overwhelmed me. I had to run. I ran to a safer place and stopped to collect my thoughts. Next time I'll be ready. Next time I'll be stronger. That's right. You better run. From day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base, feeling pretty down about the fight with Midas. All I wanted to do was lie down and take a nap, but I couldn't even fall asleep. I can't believe I had to run away. After I talked all that talk about being stronger, I still wasn't strong enough to take Midas on. Maybe he's right. Maybe I am just a silly little clown baby. I'll never win. Knock, knock. Can I come in? Sure, go ahead. I thought you might want to see some improvements I've made to the base. Come on, take a look. Okay, I'll check it out. While I was gone, King Pig had added a bunch of decorative lanterns to the base. It made the whole place look way nicer. And even though I was still bummed out, it definitely cheered me up. This is really nice and calming in a way. One of the sky lizards came running over to me. Zozo, Zozo, look what I found. 
It's a potion. I think it'll make you stronger. Try it and see what happens. Sure, I might as well. I drank the potion, and to my surprise, I felt myself getting bigger and stronger. I was growing up. My heart's increased to 100. Thank you. I feel so much better now. I had a tough time before, but I just know I'll be able to take down Midas soon. From day 79 to day 84, I decided to take my new confidence back to the flowering enchanted forest to see if Midas was still there. This time, I'll show him. He'll see that I'm not a clown at all, and he can't pick on me anymore. I looked all around, but I couldn't see Midas anywhere. I saw some sectoid guards, though, and I was able to test out my new strength by fighting them off. It was much easier than fighting the sectoid soldiers from before. I'm definitely getting better at this. When I finished battling the sectoid guards, a rich mummy came to me. Say, old chap, that was impressive. Tell me, how did you become such a talented fighter? Lots of practice, some special potions, and the support of my friends. Righto. Splendid work, my lad. A warrior of your caliber deserves the finest quality armor. Why, I have just the thing. I don't have any use for it myself. I have so much wealth already. Please, take this netherite helmet and put it to good use. Really? Thank you so much. No trouble at all, old sport. Give that wretched bully Midas what for. Ta-ta. After giving me the helmet, the rich mummy ran away and disappeared. What a weird guy, but this is a really nice gift. It'll help protect me the next time I see Midas. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, only to find that more of Midas the Bully's skeleton jackals were attacking my base, trying to break down the structures. Hey, me and my friends worked hard on those. How dare you? Oh, this was your house? We thought it was just a big pile of trash someone left in the field. It'll probably look better once we're done. You... You big jerks! I'm not gonna take that! In my pure anger at being attacked like this, I went into a rage frenzy and started knocking them out one by one. But some of them managed to escape during the chaos. I knocked out the remaining ones and decided to give chase. Chasing them outside of my base, I noticed that I wasn't fast enough to catch up. During my chase, I suddenly saw a lone saber-toothed pig just standing around in the field and crying. What's wrong, saber-toothed pig? Those big, mean skeleton jackals came through here, and they called me ugly. And now, I feel horrible about myself. Oh no, that isn't fair. For what it's worth, as saber-toothed pigs go, I think you have a certain handsome charm. But at the end of the day, it's what's on the inside that counts. The only truly ugly thing is to be mean to people. You're right, Zozo. Thank you. That made me feel a lot better. No problem, and if you'll excuse me, I need to chase those meanies down. Go get them, Zozo! From day 90 to day 94, I chased the gang of skeleton jackals into the forgotten forest. Eventually, we found a dead end. I had them backed into a corner. Ready to face the consequences of your bullying ways, skeleton jackals? But they just started laughing at me. You fool! You fell right into our trap! You think we're nasty? Meet Midas' best friend. He's gonna get all the gold now. A huge buff pigless walked in and the skeleton jackals ran off. He must have been Midas' best friend, and it was certainly scary to be standing in front of him. You can leave now. There's no need to fight. A pigless didn't seem to listen to me, so I walked in and hit him with my baseball bat. He wasn't even affected. This is gonna be a tough one. From day 95 to day 97, the real fight between me and that huge, buff pigless began. Every hit from him took down my hearts massively. I was lucky that I had a hundred of them, or I would have been doomed. I kept hitting him with my diamond sword until the pigless was finally defeated. And when he went down, he dropped a book. A book I never expected to see. It was marked, The Diary of Midas. Wow, another extract from Midas' diary. Piglas must have really been Midas' best friend if he trusted the guy to carry his diary. Of course, I opened up the diary and started reading, and I didn't believe what I was seeing inside. It said, Another day trying to get rid of Zozo. I feel like I'm so anxious all the time. It's so difficult to pretend to be big and tough all the time, but it's the only way people will respect you. Zozo, he seems like he's actually strong, and people like him too. I need to get rid of him quickly, or I think he might actually defeat me. I was blown away by what I'd read. 
So deep down, Midas is the most scared and insecure of all. And he's afraid that I'll defeat him. If he believes I can, then I believe I can too. I ran back to my base, ready to make the final preparations. I was gonna take down Midas. On day 98, I came back to my base, feeling more motivated than ever to complete my quest and end the reign of the overworld's number one bully once and for all. King Pig, Sky Lizard, and Seth gathered up around me, ready to see me off. It's time, everyone. I'm going to Midas' base to defeat him once and for all and free the land from fear and bullying. Here, here, Zozo. You've always looked out for us, and I'm proud of you for seeing this through all the way. You're a true hero for doing this. I agree. Ever since you first saved me from those sectoids and helped me defeat that mummy scorpion, I knew you had it in you to save the world. You've got a hero spirit, and you can do this. But I don't want to send you into the lion's den. Let me come and help you, Zozo. You shouldn't have to do this alone. It's okay, King Pig. I'm gonna do this myself. Knowing all of you believe in me is enough. On day 99, I made my way across the Dover Mountains, psyching myself up for the final battle against the bully who'd been hassling me for 99 days. I can't wait for this to finally be over so me and my friends can all relax. On my way there, I ran into a yak who was casually grazing. Wish me luck, Mr. Yak. I'm on my way to defeat a major bully. Good luck. Hope you don't get your butt kicked. I kept going until I saw the last thing I wanted to see. A big gang of Midas's skeleton jackals ready to fight. Oh no, even I might be outnumbered here. Think again. I turned and saw that King Pig had been following me the whole time. King Pig, why are you here? Because you need me, clearly. You've helped me a lot since you've come here, Zozo. Now it's time for me to help you. I'll distract all these nasty skeleton jackals. You go take down that big bully. You're the best, King Pig. Let's do this. On day 100, I entered Midas the Bully's lair by using my wall climbing abilities to get in past the walls. All that gold he's taken, you think he'd have invested in some better security. When I went in, Midas was the only one there. He seemed shocked to see me. What? This is impossible! I sent out all my skeleton jackals to stop you! How could you have gotten past them? Because I still have friends, unlike some people around here. Big talk for such a little baby, bozo! I may be a baby, Midas, but I'm not a coward! I know the truth! Piglas was carrying your diary, and I read it! You're afraid of me! You're afraid of everything! And rather than confront that, you're mean to everyone around you! I'm giving you one last chance to be better. You, you read my diary? Oh, for that I'm gonna pound you, you nasty little baby. This is the end. Well, I can't say I didn't give you a chance. Midas fired an energy blast at me, but I used my quick building skills to build a wall between me and the blast. Now it was time to fight back. I chugged down the potion of strength I received earlier. There was no way he could stop me now. I ran out from behind the wall and took Midas by surprise and bumped him with my bat. Before Midas could stop me, I hit him again and again and again, cutting through his golden armor until the last strike defeated him for good. That's what you get for being a bully. And with Midas gone, the overworld was free to have fun once again. On day one, I spawned as a golden hydra. Whoa, this is amazing. I looked around and noticed that I was in some sort of cave. I ventured out and immediately saw some scary dread knights. There he is. Catch him. No thanks. I scurried away, the men following after me. You come back here. They started shooting darts at me. Ah! One dart hit me and I lost some hearts. Oh. Wait, I only have five hearts? This is insane. I hurried and tried to get away, but the men were too fast. They surrounded me as I felt my eyes start to close. Perfect. Everything is coming together. And with that, I passed out. On day two, I woke up in a cage. Oh, where am I? I looked around and noticed that there were more cages around me, but most of them were empty. I almost didn't notice the frog sitting in the cage nearby. He blended in with the floor really well. I was waiting for you to wake up. Come on, we gotta get out of here. But how? Even if we can get out of the cages, I don't know how to get out of the prison. I know a way out, but you need to be the one to unlock the door. 
I looked closer and examined the gate. I began to hit it with my heads, but that started to make me feel dizzy. The frog laughed at me. Oh, no, no, use your fire spit. Fire spit? I did what the frog said, and I spit at the lock. But it wasn't fire, it was golden little orbs. I left the cage and started firing away at the frog's cage until it opened too. Thanks. Don't mention it, I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm Freddy. Freddy and I made our way over to the exit and broke through the door, up the stairs. We were home free. On day three, Freddy and I hurried as fast as we could away from the underground prison. While we were running, I spotted some pigs and chickens and hurried to gather their meat before they could scamper away. I gathered up their meat and shared some with Freddy. We both chowed down. Thanks, Zozo. And I gotta say, that prison break was amazing. I didn't know you could spit gold. Neither did I. In fact, I didn't know much about anything, except that some evil guys were after me. Freddy and I agreed to go our separate ways. I went further into the forest to explore. Maybe I would find some other hydras. Little hydra. Huh? I turned and saw an old troll walking slowly up behind me. He looked hurt. Would you mind helping me? I was attacked and need to get back home before it gets dark. Of course. We slowly made our way to his home, a little cottage next to a river. Thank you, little Hydra. Please come inside so that you are safe. There are all kinds of monsters outside. The guy seemed nice enough, so I stayed with him for the night. On days four to five, I woke up in the troll's house. He had cooked some stew for both of us. Thank you. What did you say your name was? I'm Horace, just a poor old troll trying to make his way in the world. Horace seemed better than yesterday, but still very tired. Is there anything I can do to help you? Actually, I'm more concerned for your safety. You are the Golden Hydra after all. The Golden Hydra? A prophecy was given many years ago by a great seer. She said that a Golden Hydra would be born and it would be his destiny to either save or destroy the land. Is that me? I believe it is. What should I do? Build yourself a safe house, gather materials, strengthen yourself as much as you can. You need to be at your best. Horace gave me some stone tools and a full stack of oak planks. Use these to start. I hope to hear from you, little Hydra. Be careful who you trust. I left Horace's house to find a good place to start a base. I found a nearby lake on the plains with some nice level ground. I used my stone tools to gather additional material and started working on a modest Japanese-style gold Hydra base. It may have only been one building for me so far, but there was plenty of room on the plains for this base to expand with more buildings and features. It was all coming together when I heard some men yelling. There's the Hydra! Get him! It was more of those evil Dread Knights! Not today, you goons! I spit my orbs at them, and they all turned to gold! Oh, wow! That is not what I expected! Just then, I felt power rush through me, and I grew into a larger Hydra! Now I have 11 hearts! Nice! I'll beat whoever controls those Dread Knights in no time! On day 6 to 8, I ventured from my base to gather more information. Also, I wanted to see if I could find more creatures that needed shelter from the mysterious villain and his men. I came across some tortoises who immediately tried to run away. Hey, I'm a friend! They looked at me warily. You aren't working with the sorcerer? No, a sorcerer? Is that who's commanding all the Dread Knights? I have nothing to do with him. Look, kid, it would just be better if you left this land. It's not safe for you. The tortoises slipped away, leaving me confused. I decided to go back to Horace's house to ask him about it. A great sorcerer has purged this land and intends to use your power for his purposes. He will stop at nothing to get you. That's awful. What should I do? There is a cave nearby that has some armor and tools that we could use. I was on my way there the other day when I was attacked. That's a good place to start. Sounds like a plan. On days 9 to 10, I hurried to the cave that Horace mentioned and went to explore. Sure enough, there was a chest hidden behind some rocks. Just as I was about to open it, a great hairy spider came rushing out. Ugh, gross! He attacked me, and I was too slow to spit my golden orbs. I took quite a bit of damage. Ouch! I hurried and slithered from the cave. This is too hard. I can't defeat him by myself. Hey, are you trying to get rid of that spider too? A wolf came out from behind a tree. Yeah, I am. Why do you want him gone? 
He took some of my armor. I'm trying to keep myself safe from the sorcerer's goons. Me too. Maybe we can work together. We came up with a plan and went back down to the spider's lair. The wolf distracted him and I shot my golden orbs at him. He turned immediately into a gold statue. Wow! We gathered the materials in the chest and I gave the wolf the reptile armor. Be careful out there. Zozo. Zozo. I'm Lex. Thanks, Lex. Take care of yourself. On days 11 to 12, I returned to Horus. At first, he was happy. But when I told him that I'd given Lex the armor from the chest, he got really mad. The other animals don't matter, little Hydra. What matters is that you're strong. He was acting really weird, but I couldn't blame him. He was probably scared of the sorcerer and just wanted us to be safe. You've done well, but this isn't enough. Now you must travel to the Black Forest and gather more strength potions left there by wizards of yore. This is important, little Hydra. Don't trust anyone besides me. Defeat anyone who stands in your way. I left the house, wondering why Horace didn't want me to trust anyone else. He was probably just paranoid. As I made my way to the Black Forest, I saw some more of the sorcerer's goons traveling along the river. I tried to be quiet and slither away, but they spotted me. It's the Hydra! Grab him! I dodged some of their darts and shot my golden orbs at them. They tried to escape, but after a few shots, they were all statues. Nice! I soon reached the depths of the Black Forest, hoping to gather the potions Horus wanted. On days 13 to 15, I plucked up the courage to enter the sinister Black Forest. At first, there didn't seem to be anyone there, but I kept looking, wanting to find those potions. After just a few moments, I saw a family of hoglins gathered around a campfire, harmlessly warming themselves. Why does Horus want me to defeat these hoglins? They seem really nice. I slithered in, and the hoglins were taken aback. I don't mean you any harm, I'm just curious if you have any armor. The hoglins were cautious, but one answered me. Are you going to try to steal it from us like the others? Others? What others? A sorcerer's men. They have tried to steal it before. They want all the armor taken away from the creatures in the land, so they can't fight the sorcerer. What? That didn't seem right. I needed to talk to Horus about this. On days 16 to 19, I traveled back to Horus's house. I arrived, and he seemed happy to see me. But when I told him I couldn't get the strength potions from the Black Forest, he immediately turned angry. Don't you know what's at stake? You needed to get those potions. You need to get stronger. Why is it so important that I'm stronger? You are not fulfilling my expectations. I need to think this through. He told me to leave. I did, more confused than before. When I arrived back at my base, Freddy Frog was there. Hey, buddy, it's been a while. Zozo, I'm so glad you're okay. I heard that you met the sorcerer. How did you survive? What do you mean? I haven't met him. All the creatures have seen him hiding out in the woods. He's disguised as a simple old troll. Wait, was he talking about Horus? I heard he's planning an attack with his goons today. He's going to the village in the plains. I had to see for myself if this was true. It couldn't be Horus, could it? I went with Freddy to the village in the plains like he said. When we got there, I saw the goons being led by a very recognizable troll. I looked closer and realized it was Horus. You manipulated me. Horus turned toward me. Oh, Zozo, you gullible little Hydra. You are too quick to trust, but you've been a hindrance. Time for a change of plans. You had no right to do that to me, and you have no right to steal from innocent creatures and people. I charged at him, spewing golden orbs. He easily outmaneuvered them, and with his powerful swing, threw me back into a building. Before I knew it, I blacked out. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with Freddy looking down at me. Oh good, you're awake. You need to help the villagers. I got up and followed Freddy to the village. Some of the buildings were on fire. Everyone, move away from the buildings. I hurried and spewed my orbs at them, extinguishing the fires. It was definitely not what the villagers were expecting. Whoa, this is amazing. How can we repay you? It might not be safe here anymore. You can all live at my base with me. I have lots of room. The villagers talked amongst themselves for a little while, then readily agreed. We made our way to my base and then gathered some needed supplies for the new houses. It was hard work, but in no time, everyone had a house of their own. Thank you, Zozo. These look amazing. 
On days 23 to 26, I went back to the cave where I originally spawned. It must have been important, so I figured that I should investigate. I entered the cave and it seemed very normal. I was hoping to find some sort of clue as to who my parents were. It had been a crazy couple of days, and even though I had friends, I wondered if I had family. All of a sudden, I heard a noise coming from deeper in the cave. I explored further and saw another Hydra, but she was being attacked by a group of skeletons. Get away from her! I slithered down and started shooting the skeletons. Within just a few moments, those bags of bones were gone. I turned to the Hydra, but then I felt a power surge through me. I grew, and then I leveled up into an adult Hydra. I now have 18 hearts. I let out a large breath of golden fire. So so? The Hydra looked scared of me. No need to be scared. Who are you? I'm your mother. My mother? Uh, I'm so glad I found you. Where did you go? I laid an egg and went to find some food. But when I came back, you were gone. I was so worried about you. How about you come live with me? I have a base and it'll be much safer than this cave. She happily agreed and we made our way in that direction. On days 27 to 31, as my mother and I left the cave, we happened upon Freddy again. Hey, Zozo, do you think you could help my family? He directed me toward a small alcove nearby that had been broken apart. What happened? The sorcerer's goons tried to break our alcove after we refused to leave. We managed to escape before anyone was hurt, but we don't have a home now. The frogs looked very sad, so I offered to build them a new home on my base. Really? That would be great! Thank you so much! With the frogs and my mother in tow, we continued on our way to my base. Once we arrived, we got straight to work, building a pond for the frogs and placing down a bed for my mother. I also noticed that the villagers had planted crops and gathered some animals. They even made a nice path connecting all the buildings. Thanks, guys! You've done some great work here! It was all starting to come together! I will get that golden hydra if it's the last thing I do. He is the key to all of my plans. What would you like me to do, master? I want you to follow him. Make sure he is met with challenges. He needs to reach maximum strength by the full moon. It's vital that you do this. Yes, master. On days 32 to 35, I wanted to return to the underground prison where Freddy and I were held. If Horace wanted to befriend me, why did he capture me in the first place? That's a good question. Maybe there are some answers at the prison. I asked Freddy if he wanted to come with me, and he readily agreed. We made our way down the tower where we had escaped and noticed that there were iron golems standing around this time. That's new, and they don't look like they work for Horace. I wasn't expecting you to come back here. I flipped around to see one of the iron golems standing right behind me. Are you one of the guards? Not exactly. I bartered with some of Horace's goons that are corrupt. They agreed to give you to me as a bargaining chip. We weren't expecting you to escape so quickly, however. So you're not my enemy. You just want to sabotage him. Basically. So... Perhaps we can make an arrangement to stop him. What do you have in mind? I'll be in touch. I have some research to do. Just look out for a message from Puck the Honorable. Honorable? You captured my friend Freddy! Sorry, what can I say? I like frog legs. I heard Freddy gulp behind me. Don't worry, I won't eat your friend. But we'll be in touch, Zozo. And just like that, he left without even saying goodbye. Not very polite, but okay. On days 36 to 39, I went venturing into a nearby cave to find some iron ore that could help buff out my equipment. After I found enough, I built a furnace, smelted some iron ingots, and finally made myself an iron sword, iron pickaxe, and some armor. Cool! Looking good! I went digging deeper and even managed to find some diamonds. Yes! Jackpot! This will be great for some upgrades! Before I could start crafting, I heard a noise and something hit me! I turned and saw a skeleton moving around trying to shoot me again. I spewed my golden fire breath at him. Nice! The skeleton froze, but not before dropping his bow. I picked it up and realized it was enchanted. Infinite arrows! Sweet! I returned to my base with the supplies and the bow, hoping to upgrade some of my items and the houses. One of the villagers approached me. Zozo, do you think you could help me with something? Sure, what is it? Bradley, 
and it's about our home. I thought I had gathered everything when we came here, but I left something important there. Would you come with me? I don't feel safe going by myself. Of course, let's go! On days 40 to 43, Bradley and I ventured back to the village on the plains. We hurried to the house to grab his item. What is it you needed so badly? He rummaged around his room under his bed and then whooped in victory. Got it! Is that a paintbrush? Yeah, it's my lucky paintbrush. Are you serious? It's important to me. I shook my head. What a weird kid. But hey, at least he has it now. All of a sudden, I heard a noise outside. Shh, I think there's someone here. I looked out the window, and sure enough, there was some of Horace's goons rummaging around. But they weren't alone. They were being led by a terrifying yak this time. We tried to sneak out quietly, but Bradley made a noise, and they spotted us. Smooth move, Bradley. The goons charged us, and I started to spew golden fire. Within just a few moments, we had nearly taken out all of the goons. The henchman just stood, watching us. Then after a moment, he ran off with the remaining men. Coward! We looked around and noticed the goons had dropped a few healing potions before I had frozen them into gold. Nice! Now we have a little bit bigger of a potion stash, just in case. Sheesh, that was awesome! Was the paintbrush worth it, Bradley? Absolutely! On days 44 to 49, Bradley and I traveled back to the base. Once we arrived, I found a note on my door. Puck the Honorable sent me a message to meet outside my base near the river. It didn't take me long to find him. I've been doing some research about Horus and his plans. I think that if you were able to create a certain item, you can overpower Horus. Great! What is it? An amethyst sword. It's the one thing that will harm Horus, even if he reaches the full extent of his magical powers. And it may just save your life. What do I need to do? You'll need to gather two amethyst crystals and a stick. That's all you'll need to make it. Though I can't promise those crystals won't be guarded by an incredibly dangerous mob. Great. Sounds like a walk in the park. What? You expected saving the world to be easy. Oh, I just wish I hadn't been duped by Horus in the first place. Don't beat yourself up, kid. You'll get the hang of it. Huck handed me a paper with some instructions on it. This should help you. And just like that, he left. Again. I need to tell him it's polite to say your goodbyes. On days 50 to 53, I followed the instructions Puck gave me to find the crystals. It said to go to a cave and consult with the ancient being. I realized that it had led me back to the cave where I had fought the giant spider. As I entered, I noticed that the spider was still there, frozen in gold. He must be the ancient being. I wonder if there's a way I can reverse it. I went up to the spider and tried to shoot an orb at him. Nothing. A fire breath and also nothing. Then I tried to punch him. Suddenly, he turned back into his normal self. He looked down at me angrily. How dare you freeze me? I'm sorry. I was manipulated by the sorcerer to steal your items. But you did steal some of them from the wolf. He softened a little. I did. I was desperate and needed extra protection. Clearly, it did not work. What do you want? I was told that you have information about amethyst crystals. Yes, I was once a guardian of a great multitude of crystals, but I was forced to leave when the cavern was ambushed by an evil warden. It has been a great many years since then. Can you show me where it is? I cannot. When I desired to go back, it was no longer there. Some sort of shifting due to magic. I thanked the spider and left the cave. It was just another dead end. On my way back to the base, I noticed more of Horace's goons fighting a wolf. Hey, that's Lex. Maybe he'll want to help me. I approached as he finished the goons off. Hey, remember me? Zozo, you're alive. Yeah, I am. And I'm trying to defeat the sorcerer. I could really use your skills. Would you want to help me? I don't think I can, Zozo. I'm good at fighting his goons, but he's too powerful. I think you'd be better off on your own. Before I could even argue, he ran off into the distance. Well, that was underwhelming. Maybe he'll change his mind. On days 54 to 57, I went exploring a little more. I found myself close to where I had found Horace that first time. I wondered if he was still at his house. I decided to investigate. When I got closer, I heard voices. The master needs some items taken to him. Make sure they get there safely. It was the henchman I had seen earlier, the yak. He had a few goons and he was dragging some chests of things. It seemed like a good opportunity to attack. Hey, coward! The henchman turned toward me. 
You just can't get enough, can you? He sent the goons forward to attack. I maneuvered around them easily, and within a few moments, most of them were gold statues. The henchman got mad. Before I knew it, he attacked me. Ouch! How is he so fast? I felt my heart's dwindling. He slashed at me again, faster than any other human I had encountered. I tried to breathe my golden fire at him, but it was in vain. I need to get out of here. I hurried and slithered away, retreating into the bushes. Look who's the coward now. The henchman ran off. I didn't dare follow him. I was too weak and needed to go back home. If I can't defeat just one henchman, how am I supposed to defeat a sorcerer? He managed to take out a few of your men, master, but he could not withstand my blows. He is not even close to being ready. Yes, he is weak, but he will get stronger. Just keep attacking. Send out as many men as possible. They're disposable. Will do, master. On days 58 to 62, I made it back to my base. I was met with a much needed surprise. Zozo, we made you something, sweetie. My mom led me to the edge of the base. Whoa, is this a statue of me? It was a hydra, but it wasn't completely gold. It was more of an orange color. Actually, it's a statue of your father. My father? I wanted to tell you earlier, but I didn't know if you were ready. He died right before you were born. He was trying to protect us. He couldn't wait to meet you, Zozo. I looked up at the statue. It's amazing. It's not done yet. We still need some more quartz for the teeth. Would you like to help us? Of course. I headed to the desert where I had previously seen some ruins made out of quartz and collected those materials for the statue. After giving the quartz to mom, she quickly added the teeth to the statue and now it truly looked magnificent. On days 63 to 66, I woke up to someone calling my name. I went outside. It was Lex. Hey, Lex, what's up? I went back to that cave with the spider, and to my surprise, he wasn't a gold statue anymore. Oh yeah, I should have warned you. No harm done. He actually told me that you were looking for a cavern with amethyst crystals in it. I think I might actually know where that is. Really? Show me. Lex led the way to a small desert. We finally arrived at what looked like a rock formation with a door. Great, let's just push open the door and head inside. We tried to push, pull, and roll, but the stone didn't budge. I even tried my golden fire on it. No luck. Hmm, maybe there's a special combination or code word? Maybe, but I have no idea what it might be. It was disappointing, but now I knew where it was. At least I could come back to it later. Let's head back. How about you stay with us? You don't have to be alone, Lex. He sighed. I know. I was wrong and scared. But I know you're our best chance at stopping the sorcerer. Thanks for not giving up on me. Of course. That's what friends do. Lex smiled and we headed home. On day 67 to 70, Bradley approached me again. Hey, Zozo. Do you think you could help me with something else? Is it another paintbrush, Bradley? No, actually. I wanted to practice shooting with the bow I have. Do you think you could help me with some target practice? Of course. Where did you have in mind? There's actually an archery area near my old house. Maybe we can even bring some of the stuff back to the base. That sounds like a great idea. We headed back toward Bradley's old home. When we got there, we noticed some movement outside the houses. Hey, those are the tortoises I met earlier. They told me to take a hike. Maybe we should go. Then I noticed the tortoises were fighting each other over some food. I approached carefully. Hey, friends, remember me? Ugh, you again. We don't need your help, Hydra. You're just making things worse for us. The sorcerer and his goons have driven us out of our homes, and now we hardly have food. The leader came toward me and snapped his teeth. I don't want to hurt you. He snapped at me again, and I had no choice but to spew golden fire at him. After he turned into a statue, I punched him. He quickly came back to life, looking surprised. Why did you do that? Like I said, I'm not here to hurt you. In fact, we would love for you to stay at our base. It's safe, and there's plenty of food. There's no need to fight each other. Thank you, Hydra. We are in your debt. On days 71 to 74, we made it back to the base. This time, we were met with an unwanted surprise. My mom rushed out to us. Zozo, they're attacking the base. We need your help. I slithered over and saw the Yak and his Dread Knights waiting for me. Hey, you don't belong here. The henchman looked at me and just like before, attacked in a flash. 
I still wasn't strong enough, but I knew I needed to protect my friends. Using all of my strength, I let out the largest burst of golden fire I could muster. Not bad, Hydra, but not good enough. Come and find me when you are ready. I'll be waiting with your precious friend. And before I knew it, the henchman left. I had managed to statuify his goons, but he escaped. Again. Wait, what did he say about a friend? I slithered inside as fast as I could and realized that my mother was nowhere to be found. Mom? Mom! He took her, and I had no idea where she went. I retreated to my house, blind with rage. And then I started to cry. This was all too much. How was I ever supposed to defeat anyone like this? I stayed in my house for a while, not letting anyone in. Finally, after a long time, I heard a knock at the door. Zozo, it's Lex. We have something to show you. I reluctantly left the house, not wanting anyone to see me like this. But they needed someone, and I needed to be strong for them. Lex showed me that they had fixed up the crops, bred the animals, and improved the security by building some walls. Great. Thanks, Lex. That's not all. He turned me toward the statue of my dad, and I realized there was a smaller version next to it. It was of my mom. You'll get her back, Zozo. We believe in you. I didn't know what to say. I just nodded. And you are sure he is getting stronger? Yes, master. He is almost to his full form. Excellent. Then the plan is working. The mother will eventually bring him to us. Good work. Thank you, master. On day 75 to 78, Puck the Honorable left me another note. I met him at our customary spot next to the river. Hello again, Zozo. What do you want, Puck? Someone's in a hurry. I have important information and a gift for you. I hear you are having some trouble with Horace's henchmen. I have some important information. His whereabouts. He actually lives very close to Horace. It's a bit hush-hush, but I have my ways. He handed me a map and I went to grab it. Be careful, Zozo. You don't know what you'll find there. Give me the paper, Puck. Do not lose yourself along the way. Remember what you are fighting for. I know what I'm fighting for, Puck. My mom has been taken by those creeps, and I intend on saving her. Then I'm going to put the henchmen and Horace in their rightful place. Puck handed me the paper. Good boy. Now go get your mother back. On day 79 to 84, I raced to the henchman's house. If there was a chance he had my mom, I was going to find her and defeat him once and for all. I followed the directions and found myself outside of a large wall. Inside, it was a modest looking house. This is where the henchman stays? Quite a cozy home he made for himself. I snuck around to see if he was inside, but I didn't see anything. Suddenly, I felt a gust of wind. The yak was standing right behind me. Come to retrieve your mommy. Coming after me was one thing, but involving my mom was a step too far. Your mother gave you everything, and you still can't save her. I'm going to beat you, Yak, for her! I felt a power grow within me, and I leveled up into a fully grown Hydra with 50 hearts. I got bigger, stronger, and even gained the Claw Strike ability. No, this isn't what was supposed to happen. Horace promised me I wouldn't be defeated by you. Be careful who you trust, henchman. And with a swipe of my claws, I defeated him. He burst into golden sparks and was gone. Zozo! I looked and saw my mother coming toward me. She'd managed to escape. Mom, did he hurt you? I'm fine. I'm so proud of you. Look at how strong you are. You look so much like your father did. I'm so glad you're okay. Come on, Mom. Let's get you back home. Oh, and before we go, I found this while I was imprisoned. I figured you might want it. It was a golden key. On days 85 to 89, my mom and I arrived back at the base. Everyone was so happy to see my mom, and they ushered us over to the statues. We almost finished it while you were gone, but we wanted you to put on the finishing touch. Freddy handed me a few glowstone blocks, which I added to my dad's statue, completing his fire breath. It was perfect. And I have more amazing news, Freddy. The golden key my mom found at the henchman's base. I think it's literally the key to getting into the Amethyst Crystal Cave. The henchman and Horace must have known that the Amethyst Sword could foil his grand plan. That's why he had the key to unlock the cavern. I've got to get over there now. I rushed out of the base toward the desert. As I arrived at the door, I felt my heart leap. This is it. It's finally coming together. I used the golden key to open the door. Here I go. 
I made my way down the dark tunnel, which eventually opened up into a cave system. Inside were hundreds of glowing amethyst crystals, all being watched over by a warden. This isn't going to be easy. I got right behind it, and before it knew what was happening, I let out a large burst of golden fire. He let out a terrible scream, but he didn't turn into a statue. I took a swipe at him with my claws instead. This time, he screamed in agony. I kept swiping, avoiding his blows as best as I could. My hearts were dwindling, but after just a few more moments, the warden was gone. Yes! I hurried and collected as many amethyst crystals as I could hold before hurrying out of the cavern. Time to end this, Horus. On days 90 to 94, I exited the cavern, blinking in the sunlight. Nice to see you again, little Hydra. I looked and saw Horus standing right in front of me. I was about to swipe him into oblivion when his magic froze me in place. Please, none of that. I just want to talk. I stared at him. What could you possibly want to talk to me about? You've gone out of your way to torture me. Don't you see, Hydra? I have strengthened you. You have become the Golden Hydra of the Prophecy. All thanks to me. You? You had nothing to do with it. Oh, don't even think for a minute that you would have accomplished anything without me. I made sure that you had difficulties so that you could learn. I made sure that you would eventually get the potion that would bring you to full power. You sabotaged your own henchman? He was disposable at best. But think of what we can do together, little Hydra. We can rule this land together. Of course, it'll need to be destroyed before it can be built back up. But we can accomplish that if you follow me. Never. This is your last chance. Watch the world burn around you before I possess your mind or willingly serve me. I hissed at him. Very well. Somehow, Horus made all my amethyst that I'd worked hard and suffered to collect all disappear. Be sure to be at your best by the full moon, little Hydra. In the meantime, enjoy my wrath. I heard Horus laughing, and then it all went dark. On days 95 to 97, I woke up to pitch black. Where am I? Horus must have buried me underground. I looked at what I assumed was up and started to dig. It wasn't too deep, but by the time I saw sunlight, I was exhausted. I'm getting really tired of him. I tried to catch my breath, but then I noticed a note on the ground next to me. It read, Say goodbye to your honorable friend. My blood turned cold as I raced toward Puck's dungeon. No, 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 please don't let me be too late. When I got there, the whole place was demolished. I looked around, hoping to find anything. And I heard a groan from beneath some rocks. Puck! I moved the rubble and saw him on the ground. He was in really bad shape. I guess Horus figured out who my sources were. You're going to be okay, Puck. Let me help you up. Puck coughed. <coughs> Don't worry about me, Zozo. Go, protect your mom and your friends. He's heading to your base next. And with one last breath, Puck the Honorable passed. I let out a giant roar as I mourned my friend. But I had to get to my base. I needed to stop Horus before he caused any more destruction. On day 98, I arrived too late. What was once my base was now in ruins. I ran around frantically. Mom, Lex, Bradley, Freddy. I didn't hear anyone answer. I slumped down and was about to give up when I heard a small voice. Zozo? I looked up and saw my mom limping towards me. Freddy limped alongside her. Mom, Freddy, where is everyone else? A lot of them didn't make it out, Zozo. Bradley and Lex managed to run and hide with me, but nobody else was fast enough. We're lucky to be alive. I let out another loud roar in agony. Puck was gone. All the villagers and tortoises were gone. I had tried so hard to protect everyone, and I had failed. I felt my whole body slump. Hey, everything is going to be fine. Do you know why? Why? You are the Golden Hydra, and you are going to put a stop to Horus and his destruction. Mom slipped me something. It was a key. Horus dropped this before he left. It must be to his base. I looked at the key in shock. You are going to get back your amethyst crystals, finish the amethyst sword, and you will put a stop to all of this. Promise? Promise. 
On day 99, I headed to Horace's base. It had massive black walls, and inside there was a huge tower raising high into the sky. I carefully entered the front wall gate. To my surprise, the courtyard was completely empty. I explored a bit and located a back door, probably for the goons, and I used the key to get inside. Freddy, you're the best. I snuck up the passageway and went to open the door to the main chamber. A dread knight spotted me immediately. It's the Golden Hydra. I quickly took him out. So much for being stealthy. I was a Hydra after all, a golden one at that. It was hard to keep a low profile. I opened the chamber, and to my surprise, only Horace stood inside, smiling at me. Did you really think it would be that easy, Hydra? But at last, you're a day early. What exactly was your plan here? Give me back the amethyst crystals, and nobody has to get hurt, Horace. No. I was prepared this time. I smacked him back with my claws and grabbed for the crystals. Before he knew it, I was down the passageway. Stop that Hydra! I made it back to my base and hurriedly crafted the amethyst sword out of the two amethyst crystals and a stick. It was time to defeat Horus once and for all. It on day 100, I made my way back to Horus's base. Perfect, a dramatic ending, just like I wanted. Horus was waiting for me outside. Are you ready for your reign of terror to finally end, Horus? You're exactly where I want you, Zozo. When this battle is over, I'll take control of your body and use you as just another tool to take over this world. Not if me and the Amethyst Sword have anything to say about it. This time, I wasn't playing around. He fired a magical energy blast at me, but I was so strong now, I tanked it and ran right in. Oh, no, I may have made an error here. But the time for talk was over. I ran in and hit him with the Amethyst Sword again and again, weakening him a little more each time. He unleashed his guards on me, but they were taken care of quickly. Many sword swings later, when Horus was on the edge of defeat, I stopped attacking and stepped back for a moment. You can't win! I am an all-powerful sorcerer! Silence is golden, Horus! With one blast of my golden spit, Horus was turned into a harmless golden statue forevermore! At long last, the creatures of the overworld can breathe easy again! On day one, I spawned in as a Lego man! Looks like I'm a baby Lego man! Figures! Wait, it looks like the whole Minecraft world is made out of Lego! That's amazing! I looked around the desert I'd spawned into and saw other Lego people walking around! All villagers, by the looks of it. I've never seen anything like this! What's going on here? Allow me to explain, Lego Zozo! I turned and saw a more sinister Lego man with a scary looking helmet and a business suit! He didn't look friendly! Uh -oh. I'm Lord Business, soon to be the new manager of this Lego world. I'm gonna keep things clean, orderly, and most importantly, profitable. That doesn't sound so bad. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, to make profits, you need to cut costs. And I'm gonna cut costs by destroying all those who oppose me. Starting here! He swung his hammer, and suddenly the desert was filled with explosions, tearing into the ground and blowing up all the Lego villagers around me. Just like that, I was all alone. I'm not gonna let you get away with this, Lord Business. I will defeat you. Lord Business just laughed and stomped over towards me. I've got a tight business plan, Zozo. I'll have control of this entire world in 100 days. And unless you become a master builder, you'd have no hope of stopping me. And it's not like that's gonna happen. I wanted to fight back and defend myself, but I was just a baby and I didn't have any weapons. Uh -oh. That's when a swarm of soul vultures appeared and started chasing me. All I could do was run. There's only one way out of this. I need to figure out what exactly a master builder is and become one in 100 days so I can defeat Lord Business and stop him from taking over the world. On day two, after running for hours and hours, I ended up leaving the desert and entering the savanna. I may not have any weapons yet, but at least I'm tough. Five Lego hearts? Even my health and hunger bar look like Lego pieces. Wow. And I'd need those Lego hearts because I still hadn't lost Lord Business's gang of nasty soul vultures. They were tough and fast, and I still didn't have any gear to fight them off with. Oh 
Don't you guys have something better to do than hassle a baby Lego man? As the soul vultures got closer, I could feel my energy depleting. It was almost nightfall, and now I was really in trouble. Then, flaming arrows went flying through the sky. Someone was shooting at the soul vultures. The flames scared them, and the flock retreated. Someone had saved my life. That's when I saw a Lego villager hiding behind some cover. Thanks for saving my life, man. No problem. Name's Bruce. I'm part of the resistance against Lord Business and his evil plans. Wait, there's a resistance? Please let me in on it. I want to help defeat Lord Business too. Then you better follow me. It's dangerous to be around here at nightfall. Before we go, do you perhaps have any food? My Lego belly is starting to rumble. No problem, little man. Here are some cooked mutton Lego bricks. On day three, Bruce and I went to a village in the middle of the savannah. The village provides cover for the resistance. All the key members are hiding out here. None of us want Lord Business to turn this world into his personal piggy bank. Bruce took me to a secret building in the middle of town where he wanted me to meet the resistance leader, an Egyptian illager named Osiris, sitting in a chair in his private library. Wow. Everyone was gathered around the table, so I sat behind it as well. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Osiris. I'm Zozo. Bruce told me you're the leader of the resistance against Lord Business. This is true. Bruce told me you wished to join us. That's also true. Lord Business attacked me when I first spawned, and he told me he's going to take over the world in the next 100 days. I could only stop him if I became something called a master builder. Osiris seemed shocked. He stood up and came walking towards me. A master builder? He said those exact words? Master builder? Yeah, but I have no idea what it means. Do you know anything about master builders, Osiris? Legends tell of the master builders. They're Lego men who have mastered the sacred art of construction. Through training and special techniques, they can build anything. Some say they're so good at building, they don't even need to use weapons to fight. They can use building itself as a weapon. Wow. I jumped with excitement. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. How can I become one? It won't be easy, but it's possible. It will take training in the art of building, of course. But most importantly of all, you must be taught the secret techniques by the four master builders hidden across the world. And if we are to have any hope of stopping Lord Business, you'll need to do all of this in less than 100 days. I waved goodbye and exited the secret building. On days four to five, I began my first pieces of work and training. After all, I couldn't even think about seeking the other master builders until I'd completed some basic training. Tools! First, I gotta make myself some tools. So I went over to the nearby trees and started gathering up some wood. It wasn't easy to punch through the trees, but soon enough, I had enough wood to make a crafting bench. And then, my first set of wooden tools. Yes. These look pretty cool, but a master builder needs better than wooden tools. Using my wooden shovel and pickaxe, I started digging into the ground until I hit stone and collected enough blocks to build myself a full set of stone gear, including tools and a sword. Because I was now an official part of the resistance, Osiris said I was allowed to build my base on the edge of the village, so I started using my spare wood and stone blocks to build the foundations of my base. The first step was building rooms for myself and Bruce, the Lego villager who had saved my life in the desert. It's always nice to have a friend living with you. Bruce hurried towards me, looking frantic. Zozo, the building is gonna have to wait. I can see a bunch of zombies creeping towards us out of the savannah. We need to stop them. Luckily, I had my new stone sword, so I pulled it out and ran in, ready to kick some moldy zombie booty. You're messing with a future master builder here. You're gonna regret this. And they did, because it didn't take me long to defeat the zombies and return to my base, glowing with victory. That's when I started to change. I upgraded, getting bigger, and gaining two hearts. Seven hearts? This is awesome! On day six through eight, I was wandering through the savannah until I reached a forest. I was collecting more wood for my base when I saw a wooden villager being attacked by this big and ugly looking bug called a sectoid. But the wooden villager was fighting back, building walls between him and the attacking sectoid. I've never seen anyone fight like this before. Maybe he's... That's when the wooden villager noticed me. Are you gonna stand there all day, son? Or are you gonna give me a hand with this thing? Oh, right, sorry. I ran in with my stone sword and joined the fight. The sectoid was tough, but with me and the wooden villager working together, we had a chance. 
Every time the sectoid tried to attack me, the wooden villager quickly built a little wall between us. Soon enough, the sectoid was exhausted and confused, and I was able to defeat it with my stone sword. He dropped some string. I guess it makes sense. He did look a bit like a spider. All that was left was me and the wooden villager. I wanted to know more about his special fighting skills. Thanks for the assist, kid. Who are you? I'm Zozo, and who are you? I'm Master Red. Wait, Master? As in Master Builder? Can you help me learn to be like you? Sure thing, kid. Your training starts now. You're gonna help me chase a soul eater out of a cave near here. Sounds like a plan, Master. Let's go. On days nine to 10, Master Ren and I made our way through the forest until we found the cave he told me about. Before we go in, Master Ren, what's the first lesson? How can I fight like a master builder? The first technique is the one you saw me using in the woods, kid. When your opponent tries to attack you, you build a wall between you and them. Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's do this. I followed Master Ren into the cave where the Soul Eater was waiting. It was even bigger and scarier than I thought it'd be. And the second it saw us, it flew towards us. Now is the time, Zozo. Try out the technique I taught you. But with the Soul Eater charging towards me, I panicked. I couldn't help it. I tried to build the wall between us as quickly as I could, but the Soul Eater just flew over the tiny barricade and started attacking me. In one strike, I lost a bunch of hearts. Uh-oh, I need to get out of here. I ran out of the cave and Master Ren followed me. I felt so embarrassed to lose in front of him like that, but he didn't seem to mind. Perhaps I will need to train you more cautiously, young Zozo. How about you come stay at my base? You can train me more there. That sounds like a good idea to me. On days 11 to 12, I returned back to my base with Master Ren and started adding another floor to the base. This way, he can have his own room. I hope this is to your liking, Master Ren. Well, it's clear you have much to learn in the way of building. But thank you, Zozo. It'll do. While Master Ren was resting up, I decided to put my building skills to good use. I created a custom crafting room where I could perfect my crafting skills and store my creations. By the time I was done, I saw that Osiris had arrived at my base and he had something to tell me. How's the training going, Zozo? It's, uh, going. What's up? I figured it was finally time for me to tell you about what's really going on and why Lord Business is doing everything he's doing. You see, creativity is a wonderful thing and it's a skill that all master builders are required to develop. But the purest kind of creativity is the kind used to make people happy. The darkest kind is the one that Lord Business has fallen prey to. Creativity to satisfy greed. All he cares about is money, and everything that people create, he seeks to own, and he's willing to destroy anyone who gets in the way of his bottom line. After hearing this story, I went out into the forest and gathered more sticks and wooden blocks. I made a little fenced up area in the backyard of my base and herded some cows into it, as well as making a small wheat farm alongside it. If I'm gonna become a master builder, I need to be able to build everything. On days 13 to 15, I approached Ren, who was practicing in an archery range I had built for him on the other side of the base. Hey Ren, I was wondering, do you know other ways I can improve my building abilities? Hmm, well, I suppose there is this handy tool I usually use. It's called a builder's wand, and it lets you build much faster by extending connected block faces. Huh? What? You didn't think to mention this before in the cave? Well, I have been known to be a bit forgetful here and there. Here, have one. Ren tossed out the wand for me. Thanks. Well, hopefully you can remember anything about master builders since, you know, you are one of them. Osiris said something about there being four master builders out there, and I've only found you. Hmm, perhaps your best bet is searching the snowy tundra. I've heard tales of mysterious buildings popping up there. It could be the work of a master builder then I guess the snowy tundra is exactly where I'm heading. Word of advice, Zozo. Build yourself a bow first. You never know when it'll come in handy for you. Before setting off for the snowy tundra, I tested out the builder's wand, and sure enough, it makes building walls much easier. This tool is really useful. I also followed Ren's advice and made myself a bow, just in case. All I needed were some feathers, and luckily there were a few chickens around, so I could craft the arrows as well. Better to have a bow and not need it, right? I made my way across the map to the snowy tundra. Part of me hoped I'd find the next master builder waiting for me, but it turned out that the snowy tundra was huge. It'd take me forever to find someone here. 
but it didn't take long for a mutant snow golem to find me and start attacking. You must work for Lord Business. Jeez, is there anyone outside the village who doesn't work for that guy? I tried my best to use Master Ren's technique, building walls in front of the attacking snow golem, but he was still too fast for me, even with the builder's wand. In the end, I kept my distance and finished him off with the bow. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be good enough to be a master builder at this rate. But the mutant snow golem did drop something, a builder's potion, which helps the speed of my mining and building. Wow. Just what the doctor ordered. I returned to my base and took the potion, practicing by digging a huge hole near my base and collecting a bunch of stone blocks. It was a good exercise because soon enough, I leveled up and gained two more hearts. Nine hearts? This is rad! On days 16 to 19, I continued exploring, hoping I might find another master builder hiding inside some ancient ruins. This place is so old and spooky, it seems just like the kind of place an old master would hang out. But I was half right. I didn't find a master builder here, but I did find an ancient sign that might lead me to one. It read, He who seeks to reach the peak of skill must climb to the peak itself. A master dwells where the air is thin. Hmm, thin air. Peaks? That sounds like a mountain. I know where I need to go now. But I couldn't celebrate too quickly. A group of Barracoa ancient people sent by Lord Business had cornered me. I needed to think fast. What would a master builder do? That's when I had an idea. Using all the stone I'd mined in the days before, I quickly ran around the group of Barracoa, building a wall around them that boxed them all in. It was quite tricky because they were surprisingly fast for their short stature. Eventually, I did succeed in boxing them in, though. Before any of them had a chance to escape, I fled the ancient ruins, safe to fight another day. Master Ren is gonna be so proud of me. On days 20 through 22, I was making my way through the forest, gathering up materials to prepare for my journey into the mountain. These mountains are treacherous. I should really upgrade my gear before I go. While I was in the forest, some spiders attacked me. I was low on stone at the time, so I decided to defeat them with my stone sword instead of doing it the master builder way. Variety is the spice of life. Once the spiders were dealt with, I mined until I stumbled into a small cave system. I found some iron deposits. It took a while to mine all of it, but in no time I had enough to smelt and craft into a set of iron armor and tools. It made me feel so cool and powerful. Yes. Maybe it's time for me to pay my old enemy a visit. With my new tools and my new power, I went back to the cave where I had almost been defeated by the Soul Eater. But this time, it was going to happen the other way around. Come get me, Soul Eater. I'll give you something to chew on. I decided to go for a mix of standard and master builder tactics. As the Soul Eater flew towards me, I used my skill to quickly build a wall around the Soul Eater, trapping him in place. But there was no time to waste. I pulled out my new iron sword and one-shotted the Soul Eater right in the head. How do you like me now, you cave-dwelling meanie? Having fun, Zozo? I turned and saw Lord Business standing at the cave entrance and staring at me. Lord Business, what are you doing here? Watching your pathetic attempt to become a master builder. You really think you can make a difference? You're not special, Zozo. And believe me, when my factories are complete, we'll never need people like you to make anything ever again. And with that, he disappeared. Factories? That doesn't sound good. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base, eager to tell Master Ren that I'd used my new skills to take down the Soul Eater. This is an amazing development, Zozo. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Master Ren. I couldn't have done it without your help. I have a reward for you, a special schematic for a new tool I've built. I think you'll find it quite useful. Master Ren gave me a book full of instructions, and I went into the crafting room to begin building. By the time I was done, I had a multi-tool. One tool that can be a pickaxe, a shovel, an axe, a sword, and a hoe, all in one. This is a perfect tool for a master builder. I then used my new iron multi-tool to clear the mess we did outside the base. I also used it to gather some more food. I then took some time to build a wall around my base. Now nobody with bad intentions could get in. On days 27 to 31, I decided to finally follow the instructions I saw in the ancient ruins. As I arrived at the ruins, I saw the Barracoa were gone, so I made my way up into the mountains. It was dark, cold, and difficult to climb, but it was worth it if it'd make me be a better builder. I couldn't see any mobs, thankfully, but I was so high up that if I fell, I probably would've been done for anyway. 
Then, without warning, an Iceman landed on the ground next to me. Who goes there? What? Where did you come from? That doesn't matter. Why are you invading my domain, stranger? I'm Zozo, and I swear I didn't mean to intrude. I just came here to look for a master builder. Then you found him. I'm Master Frost, the master builder of the mountains. That's when I saw how Master Frost had gotten the jump on me. He'd immediately built a staircase behind me and used it to attack me from above. He really was a master builder. Want to come back to my base, Master Frost? I'd love to learn from you. I can even make you your own room. Sure, why not? It's been a while since I've taught a young whippersnapper in the tricks. While we made our way back to my base, we came across a rainbow tree. Wow. Frost built some stairs so I could reach the top, and I mined some unique material with my multi-tool. Super colorful rainbow grass blocks. I returned to my base afterwards and built a new room for Master Frost, even giving him a window made from rainbow glass blocks. It was almost done when Bruce approached me in a panic. Zozo, Lord Business has sent some minions to attack the village. We need your help immediately. On days 32 to 35, I rushed into the village with Bruce, ready to defend it from whatever attack Lord Business had unleashed on us. But I wasn't expecting to see a gang of Ender Creepers crawling all over the village. The whole village was completely overrun by creepers. They were chasing innocent villagers all around the village. Oh no, looks like Lord Business really took his evil up a notch. Knowing it was dangerous to take on the Ender Creepers up close, Bruce and I pulled out our bows and started shooting the Ender Creepers, trying to take them out before they exploded. We had to be extra careful, but with the help of Bruce, we managed to get a lot of them. A few unfortunately slipped through the net, with awful consequences. Bruce suddenly looked towards Osiris's secret base. Zozo, look! They're cornering Osiris! Bruce was right! Osiris was being cornered by an ender creeper, slowly creeping towards him. We heard him beg for mercy. No! No, please don't do this! Before we could get close enough to save the resistance beloved leader, we heard it! A Lego boom! The ender creeper exploded, setting off a chain reaction that blew up a bunch of the other houses. The whole village was in ruins! Uh -oh. We rushed to check out Osiris' secret base, but all we saw was smoke rolling out. He was gone! Osiris, no! There was so much left unsaid between us! Come on, Zozo, we can mourn later. We need to stop these heavy creepers before they can do any more damage. It didn't take us long to defeat the rest of the Ender Creepers, but with Osiris gone, our morale had taken a serious hit. On days 36 to 39, I decided I needed to search further if I wanted to find the third and fourth master builder. That's why I traveled all the way to the Ice Spikes, a scary and desolate land even further away than the snowy tundra. Master builder! Is there a master builder anywhere? I soon came across a Viking villager named Olaf. He was camping in one of the Ice Spikes, eating a Lego apple. He looked exhausted. You okay there, buddy? Oh yes, just taking a breather. You wouldn't happen to be a master builder, would you? No, afraid not. I'm just a viking. But I can tell you where to find a master builder if you help me deal with a little problem I'm having. That sounds awesome. What do you need? There's a bad snowman around here I've been trying to destroy. But I'm having an off day. If you can take care of him for me, I'll give you the information you need. Deal. I wandered around the ice spikes until I found the bad snowman that Olaf had warned me about. Thankfully, I still had plenty of energy, so I pulled out my multi-tool sword and took him by surprise. Don't mess with this, Lego man. That's no joke. He even left a few carrots and snowballs in his chest. Maybe the Viking will want to play a snowball fight with me. I returned to the Viking and told him the good news. The bad snowman had been defeated. Finally, I thought I'd never get to leave this stinking place. Yeah, the snowman even left a few snowballs behind. Wanna play a snowball fight? Uh, no thanks. I'm too old and tired for such games. Oh, okay. So how about the Master Builder? Where can I find the next one? I heard there's one of them hiding out in the swamp, but he likes his privacy. No offense, but you should probably get better before you go see him. If you're not experienced enough, he'll think you're just wasting his time. On days 40 through 43, I returned to the base. Walking through the rubble the creepers left behind reminded me of the loss of our great Osiris leader. This is no time for sadness. I'm ready to practice and improve my building skills, so one day I can have my vengeance. I added some new furniture to the base, along with some bookcases that helped me study the craft of master building. 
Master Ren approached me midway through my renovations with a new request. Zozo, my student, Lord Business's latest creeper attack on the village has destroyed many homes and left many LEGO villagers homeless. You should do them a kindness and make room in your base for them to live in the meantime. Master Ren made a good point. I invited in the homeless LEGO villagers and started building another level to my base, complete with beds for them all to sleep in. Just as I finished, Master Frost came to me with an urgent message. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Zozo, but I've received some vital information. Some of my allies have followed up on the lead for one of Lord Business's factories. I need you to investigate and find out what's going on. It's also the perfect time for you to test out my attack from above technique. Of course, Master Frost, I won't let you down. On days 44 to 49, I followed Master Frost's instructions until I reached the factory. It was a spooky looking building, so harsh and out of place in this fun Lego world. I need to stop this madness as soon as possible before it ruins the whole world. I crept inside, trying to stay hidden. But while I may have gotten really good at building, I was kind of terrible at creeping because Lord Business noticed me immediately. Uh -oh. This is private property, Zozo. Did none of your masters ever teach you not to trespass? It's rude. It's also rude to be an evil overlord. What's your end game, Lord Business? What's the big plan here? Well, since you'll never leave this place alive, I guess I can tell you. You see this factory? I'm going to cover the whole world in thousands like it and fill it with builders like you. You'll all either work for me or be destroyed endlessly building products that I can sell for a massive profit. All for me! You'll never get away with this! I won't let you! You don't have a choice. Remember the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Speaking of which, meet a friend of mine, the Gold Warrior. A Gold Warrior stepped out from the darkness, ready to fight. Get rid of him. I'm a little too busy to stick around and watch. Lord Business disappeared again, and the Gold Warrior charged at me. On days 50 through 53, I tried to use my skills to fend off the Gold Warrior. He was the strongest enemy I'd ever faced, and he wasn't giving up easy. No matter how fast I tried to run away from him, he caught up to me. Can't we just talk this out, Mr. Gold Warrior? He didn't seem to think so. Instead, he kept trying to jab me with his lethal spiky club. I kept building walls between us, but every time, he'd effortlessly get around them. I was in real trouble. I tried taking him down with a bow, but he used his shield to stop the arrows. I got one shot in, but that was about it. This is not effective. I need to change tactics. I pulled out my multi-tool and activated the sword. I couldn't stop him with my master builder techniques or my bow, so I was going to have to fight him directly instead. It was a tough battle, and I lost quite a few hearts along the way. I even got down to half a heart. Luckily, I was able to build my way to safety and eat to regain my health. Phew, this is getting intense. But all right, here goes round two. After a lot of fighting, I was finally able to defeat him. When he went down, he dropped his gold shield and a golden key. Oh, I wonder what this unlocks. I better keep it in my inventory. You never know when you need a key. On days 54 to 57, I left Lord Business's spooky factory and made my way outside onto the plains. But something was already out there waiting for me. A powerful earth elemental, ready to battle. The earth elemental started walking towards me, but out here in the open, I could use my master building skills. I quickly started using the master frost technique, building stairs so I could run up them and attack from above. It's over, I have the high ground. I leaped down onto the earth elemental and destroyed him in one direct strike to the head. He dropped a powerful Protection 3 enchantment book too. This will make me a lot more resistant to damage when I apply it to my armor. But I should probably wait until I get better armor and apply it then. With my mission complete, I returned to my base to tell Master Frost. I found him sitting on a bench by the lake as he made ice around him freeze up. I told him about Lord Business's evil plan and about my mastery of his technique. Excellent work, Zozo, despite the frightening news. Go see Bruce in a few days. He'll have something valuable for you to do then. Will do. Just make sure that all the fish don't freeze. On days 58 to 62, I decided that my base needed a little tender love and care, so I decided to expand the farm to also include chickens. Mmm, anyone else want a fried egg? But my base was only one half of my defenses. I needed to get myself better armor and tools too. 
That's why I used my multi-tool to dig into a mine behind my base, going deeper and deeper until I finally found some diamonds. Even though they look like Lego pieces, diamonds are still a master builder's best friend. I took the diamonds back into my crafting room and built myself a full set of diamond gear, weapons, tools, and armor. Then I crafted myself an anvil and applied the Protection 3 book to my diamond chest plate. Now I finally have some proper protection. Wait, what is this? I don't have a full armor bar. I guess Lego diamonds aren't quite as tough as real diamonds. After all that hard work, I built and added a new floor with a lounge and a small terrace to my base so I could finally put my feet up and relax. I just knew it wouldn't last for long. On day 63 to 66, I approached Bruce the Lego villager and asked him what he had for me. I've been closely observing your progress, Zuzu, and I believe you finally have what it takes to meet the next master builder. I've marked out the swamp where he lives on your map. Seek him out and learn his teachings. Thank you, Bruce. Wish me luck. Over the next couple days, I made the long journey to the swamp. It was a dark and humid place with a strong, musty smell. I really didn't want to spend too long here. Even less so when I saw a huge polypham running towards me, ready to fight. Get out of my swamp, intruder! The polypham was twice the size of me. I'd never stand a chance against him in a fight. I tried to run away, but he was way ahead of me. The polypham mined into the ground and rapidly tunneled below me before popping back up out of the ground right in front of me. Please, I don't want any trouble. I'm just looking for the master builder. The polypham immediately stopped. Oh, why didn't you say so? Nice to meet you. I'm Master Tony, the master builder of the swamp. Master Tony, I'm so pleased to see you. I was told you didn't like visitors. Normally, I don't. But today, I need a hand. I've got a monstrous swamp leech infestation. If you help me with that, I'll teach you a thing or two. On day 67 to 70, I followed Master Tony deeper into the swamp to help him take on his monstrous swamp leech problem. Being a master builder, I'm pretty strong, but leeches have always squicked me out, so I appreciate your help on this. It didn't take us long to find the leech infestation. I didn't want to get too close either. They looked pretty freaky, so I pulled out my bow and picked them all off at a distance, one arrow at a time. Leeches, be gone! Whoa, I should have been a pest controller. Great job, Zozo. I'm glad I don't need to look at those nasty things anymore. Happy to help. Now, how about that technique? Master Tony was a man of his word. He showed me how he'd mastered the combat tunneling technique, how you could use your pickaxe to dig into the ground to escape or create pits for enemies to fall into. This is awesome. I only need to learn from one more master and I'll be a master builder myself. On day 71 through 74, while searching the plains, I found an entrance leading to some kind of bunker. What could have been inside? And if you like crazy mysteries and wild adventures, you should search for more Zozo videos by typing Z-O-Z-O -Z -O into your search bar. I prepared my diamond sword and climbed down through the door. It looked like some kind of secret bunker underneath, filled with bookshelves and books all marked factory plans. Wait, this place must be owned by Lord Business. Clever observation, Zozo. Lord Business suddenly came out of the secret bookshelf entrance and swung at me with his netherite sword. I barely dodged in time. I made a mistake, sending my minions to destroy you before. I should just get it over with and destroy you myself. I tried to fight back, swinging my sword at him, but every time he blocked my strike and fought back, knocking off a few of my hearts. You're no master builder, Zozo. You're weak, weak and pathetic. As Lord Business tried to finish me off, all I could do was escape. In a frantic panic, I built a wall between him and myself and made my way out of the bunker while he broke through it. I wasn't strong enough to beat him. All I could do was run, but at least I escaped, this time anyway. On day 75 through 78, I continued making improvements on my base. It was one of the tallest and most impressive bases I've ever made, so I decided to build downwards too. That's why I made a cozy basement to hold extra supplies. I even installed a few beds just in case. Just as I was finishing up, Master Frost approached me with a gift. Zozo, I just wanted to tell you I'm so proud of all the work you're doing. Nobody is fighting back against Lord Business as hard as you. I wanted to give you a gift as a token of my thanks. It's a potion of strength I brewed for you. 
Wow, thanks, Master Frost. I can't wait to try it. I drank the potion and felt myself getting bigger and stronger by the second. By the time the transformation was done, I was a full-grown Lego man with 12 hearts. Let's see Lord Business try to take me on now. On day 79 through 84, I decided to travel for a bit to flex my new strength and master builder abilities by taking on some bad guys in the forest. Lucky for me, a gang of bad guys weren't hard to find, as when things got dark, the woods soon became filled with angry skeletons. You guys have got to go down, no bones about it. They didn't appreciate my bad pun. Instead, they attacked me. I decided to put all my master builder skills to use in stopping them. First, I used Master Frost's technique. I quickly made a stairway and climbed to the top to get away from them. Can't get me up here. Then, I used Master Tony's special technique. I leaped down onto the ground from above and started digging until I formed a big square hole in the ground. It didn't take long for the skeletons to follow me and fall in as I climbed back out. Then I capped it off with Master Ren's technique and built a roof over the pit where all the skeletons were trapped, sealing them away forever. Wow, I'm almost a master builder. It's true, and I like your style, Zozo. I turned and saw that an Egyptian jackal had been standing there and watching me the whole time. He seemed impressed. I'm Master Joey, the final master builder. I hear you've been looking for me. You heard correctly, Master Joey. Can you teach me your special technique so I can finally become a true master builder? I won't give you a technique, Zozo, but I will give you a tool. The hammer. When you need it to destroy blocks in a hurry, you just can't beat it. Congratulations, you're a master builder now. On days 85 through 89, I came back to my base with new tools and new knowledge, only to find that we were under attack from a horde of spider creepers. They were crawling all across the village and exploding, destroying chunks of the buildings. I was terrified they would go for my base and the people inside. I can't let you do this. One of the spiders came crawling towards me. Fortunately, Bruce came out of one of the buildings with his bow, helping me fight back. Don't worry, Zozo. You won't need to fight alone. I've got your back. So we fought together, taking on and taking out most of the spider creepers until the rest ran out into the savannah. I've got to go get them. I can't let them get away this time. But as I tried to chase the fleeing group, I saw a baby Lego villager being chased by a spider creeper. I needed to save him. Don't worry, baby, I'll save you. I pulled out my diamond sword, charged in, and defeated the spider creeper. Thank you, Zozo, you saved my life. On days 90 to 94, after saving the Lego villager baby, I ran into the forest to chase the fleeing gang of spider creepers. You creeps are gonna pay for what you did to the village. I chased them until I saw that they were trying to hide in a nearby cave, but it was too late. I already saw them. I ran in, ready to fight with my diamond sword, until I noticed that I'd been lured into a trap. There was an ender creeper waiting for me, and he was wearing a name tag. It read, Vice President to Lord Business. Uh-oh, I guess you're not gonna be easy to fight then, are you? The Ender Creeper, VP, didn't even reply. He just came running at me, and I began to panic. Better use my Master Builder skills. I couldn't make a staircase in the cave, but I could still use Master Ren's technique and make a wall. I quickly built one up between us, but VP teleported right through it and hit me, knocking off a few hearts. Looks like this is gonna be my hardest battle yet. On days 95 through 97, the battle raged on. VP truly was the toughest enemy I'd ever fought. And often when I tried to hit him, he teleported out of the way. Why won't you stay still and fight fair, VP? You're the VP of being a lousy cheater. Being an ender creeper, he also had the ability to teleport lit TNT right on top of my head. Oh man, I've gotta be careful and dodge his falling TNT. That's when I figured out the perfect method of stopping him. I used Master Tony's technique and created a hole, tricking the Ender Creeper into falling into it. After that, all it took was one strike from above to destroy the Ender Creeper. He even dropped a banana waba brick, one of the strongest unbreakable pickaxes in the world. So of course, I grabbed it. In that moment, I had a vision revealing the truth about Lord Business. 
once. He also wanted to be a master builder, and he sought out the secrets to learn the knowledge and the techniques. But in the end, he was never meant to be. He was too greedy and impatient to truly learn. So instead, he decided he'd make others do the work for him and just take all the money. If Lord Business never even fully gained his master builder skills, maybe I really will be able to finally defeat him. On day 98, I prepared for the final battle, mining to gather extra blocks that I could use in the fight. Before I could leave, each of my friends came to offer words of encouragement. First, Bruce, the Lego villager. You're one of the strongest fighters the Resistance has ever had, Zozo. I just want you to know, no matter how this ends, it's been an honor serving with you. Then came Master Ren. You have learned the ways of the Master Builder, Zozo. Remember them and use them wisely and even Lord Business won't be able to defeat you. And finally, Master Frost. Be creative, Zozo. That's the most important thing, and it's something you're brilliant at. Lord Business will never be able to take that away from you. Hearing all of this made me finally feel ready to take on the evil mastermind behind it all. On day 99, I made my way to Lord Business's business base, where I was sure to find him. On the way there, I saw a Lego kid playing in the savanna. I believe in you, Zozo! You're my hero! Thanks, kid. I'm gonna try my best. But when I arrived outside the business base, I noticed that it was heavily guarded by a gang of soul vultures. Oh no, how can I fight all of these, then take on Lord Business? I'll be outmatched. That's when Master Tony the Polypham suddenly appeared. Don't you worry, buddy. I'll take care of the soul vultures. You get in there and take that businessman down. Thank you, Master Tony. I couldn't do this without you. Master Tony ran in and started fighting the soul vultures. And while he was distracted, I ran right past him and used the key dropped by the gold warrior to enter the business base. I knew that key would come in handy. On day 100, with my tools gathered and my master builder status secured, I entered the inner sanctum of Lord Business's business base. The place was huge, with tall walls and a massive fountain in the middle. I proceeded forward through a treasure room filled with gold piles. He was waiting for me on the other side of the room, sitting in his giant golden throne, laughing evilly. So you're finally here, Zozo, but I'm afraid you're already too late. It's never too late. Ha! That's what you think. My forces are ready to roll out, and they follow only my command. This whole world will be turned into one giant corporation, and I will be the CEO. Only a master builder could stop me now. That's the thing, Lord Business. I am a master builder. I pulled out my hammer and prepared to battle the evil businessman for the sake of the world. He jumped off his chair, wielding a netherite sword, and tried to attack me. I quickly built a wall between us, and any time he knocked the wall down, I built another. Aren't you even going to fight back, Zozo? This is pathetic. I am fighting. I'm fighting like a master builder. I blocked myself into the treasure room while Lord Business was breaking down my wall. I quickly started building a staircase. As he broke through, I leapt down onto him and hit him. No, no fair. You'd know these techniques if you ever bothered to learn them, Lord Business. And you'd know this technique if you had money. Ender Creepers, attack. Lord Business pulled a dirty trick. Doors around the room opened and heavy creepers started piling in. He was going to blow me sky high. Oh, no. Face it, Zozo, you're outnumbered and outgunned. I've won. Not yet you haven't. It was time to put all my training to good use for one last move. While the heavy creepers chased me, I mined a huge hole into the ground with my hammer. I pushed Lord Business into the hole. I looked at the creepers and they followed me as I jumped into the hole. Zozo, what are you doing? Finishing this. As Lord Business and the heavy creepers scrambled around trying to grab me, I placed down the ladders and climbed out of the hole. Yes. Zozo, you fool, let me out of this pit. The heavy creepers will explode. It'll destroy us both. Not quite, Lord Business. Boom, they all exploded, destroying Lord Business with them as I ran from the room. It was finally over. I'd become a master builder and saved the whole world. On day one, I spawned in as Spidey from Spidey and his amazing friends. I was surrounded by friendly spiders who were bigger than me. Wow, I'm really small. I must be a baby version of Spidey. But where are my friends? None of the spiders got a chance to tell me because the green goblin jumped out from behind a bush. 
There you are! Thought you could hide from me with all these spiders? Well, you were wrong, Spidey. Tag, you're it! Ha ha ha! He threw a pumpkin bomb, and I jumped out of the way just in time. But the other spiders were caught in the explosion. I was the only one who made it out okay. You're rotten, Green Goblin, rotten to the core. What are you doing here? You're asking the wrong question, Spidey. You're asking why I'm here, but you should be asking, why isn't Spin here? Right, Spin, Miles Morales, my friend. Why isn't he here? What did you do with him? That's for me to know, and you to find out. If you want to get him back, y'all need to come and find me and beat me in a fight. If you can't find my hideout in 100 days, I'll make sure you never see your little buddy again. He threw another pumpkin bomb and disappeared, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Oh no, that evil villain kidnapped Spin, and I only have 100 days to get him back. If I'm going to fight the Green Goblin and win, I need to get a whole lot stronger first. On day two, I decided to get out of the planes and into a new location. With all of the spiders gone, I was completely on my own. And there's nothing for me to climb or swing from out here. I need some tall buildings or some trees. So I headed into the forest. I already had 10 hearts. I sure hope I don't run into any trouble out here. I must have jinxed myself because a group of gremlins came out from behind a bunch of trees and started closing in around me. Uh -oh. Hey, why are you bothering me? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, they didn't have to. We're here on orders from the Green Goblin. He wanted us to deliver something to you in person. A beatdown. Uh-oh, I'm not strong enough to take on all of these enemies at once. Let's get them, boys. The gremlins were getting closer, and I couldn't see anywhere to run. Was this it? Was I already going to lose on my second day? Hey, pick on someone your own size. I looked towards the voice, and I saw a rabbit skiing towards the gremlins. He skied right into them, breaking through the circle, and I was able to run away before they could get to me. When I finally stopped running, I noticed the rabbit was right behind me. Thanks for the help. No problem. I can't stand bullies. My name is Harry. Hi, Harry. I'm Spidey, but you can call me Zozo. On day three, Harry the skiing rabbit took me back to his home with him in the underground rabbit burrow. It was really nice of him, especially since I didn't have a base of my own yet. Now I have a safe place to rest for a little while where the green goblin wouldn't bother me. Thanks, Harry. This is so nice. No problem, Zozo. Hey, there's someone I want you to meet. He knows a lot about the green goblin, and I think he can help you out. He took me to the burrow of a Giza rabbit. Hello. I understand you're going up against the Green Goblin, a nasty fellow. Don't I know it. Well, forgive me for saying so, but you won't get far like that. You need some tools, some weapons, and you need to get a whole lot stronger. I know, but where should I start? The forest to the north has lots of wood. Go gather some so you can start making tools. You'll need to be well equipped with the strongest tools you can find, as well as an open heart and an adventurous spirit. It takes a hero to defeat a villain, and if you really try, you can become the hero that takes down the Green Goblin once and for all. That sounded like a whole lot of work, but as I thought about all the spiders the Green Goblin hurt and thought about Spin being held prisoner somewhere, I knew it was worth it. I guess I'd better get right to it then. First things first, I need to go gather that wood. You'd better go with him, Harry. We all need a friend in tough times, and Zozo has quite the journey ahead of him. Okay, let's go, Zozo! On days four and five, Harry and I went out into the northern forest to start gathering wood. There was no time to waste, so I started punching as many trees as I could. After I gathered enough wood, I built a crafting bench and crafted a set of wooden tools. Hooray! Now I can start gathering stone. Yes. You're doing awesome so far. Thanks, but I think this is the easy part. It'll only get harder from here. I'll be here to help every step of the way. Every hero needs a sidekick, right? That's true, but enough talking for now. I've got to get enough stone to upgrade my tools. I got to work, and once I had enough stone, I upgraded all of my tools from wooden ones to stone ones. Ready to help me build a base? We need a secret hideout if I'm going to be a real superhero. Yeah! We started building the base and made sure to add a room for me and another room for Harry so we both had somewhere to sleep. While we were building, a tarantula hawk flew up and started attacking me. What's the big idea? I couldn't let it get me, not when I was finally making progress. And I definitely wouldn't let it hurt Harry. 
The fight wasn't easy, but I won. And afterward, I felt myself getting stronger. Hey, I gained a heart. You're one step closer to being a superhero. Yeah. On day six through eight, I explored more of the forest. I wanted to see what other resources I could use to build my base, or if there was any useful item someone might have dropped. As I was getting ready to pick some apples from a tree, I heard someone yelling. Help, somebody, help. Sounds like someone needs a hero. I ran toward the sound of the voice, and I saw a raccoon being attacked by a pack of wolves. Don't worry, I'll help you. I'm your friendly neighborhood Zozo. As soon as the wolves saw me coming, they left the raccoon alone and ran at me. They snapped their jaws, trying to bite me and scratch me with their claws. And I dodged their attacks, and I hit them back with my stone sword. Ha, you're no match for me. I'm getting pretty good at this fighting to defend the innocent thing. After a while, I tired them out, and the wolves ran off and left me and the raccoon alone. Thank you so much. You saved my life. No problem. I'm Zozo. My name is May. I'm sorry to bother you, but you're such a strong fighter. Would you help me with something else? Helping is what I do. I'm so glad. And please, come with me to the swamp. There's a nasty bad guy there I need help with. Lead the way. On days 9 and 10, May led me to the swamp to help deal with her problem. So, what's the deal with this swamp? I was staying here when this big, mean ogre came in and started stomping around and telling me to get out. He broke my house apart and told me that this was his swamp now and I needed to get out. But all of my things are still here and I don't want to just abandon them. Oh geez, that does sound like a lot of trouble. I'll do whatever I can to help. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I found you. What are you doing in my swamp? The ogre jumped out, roaring and running right at us. He was much bigger than me, but I couldn't back down. I drew my sword and got ready to fight him. This isn't your swamp. You can't just kick people out. I can do whatever I want. I'm the biggest, baddest ogre in the swamp, which means it all belongs to me. You can't take things from people just because you're bigger and stronger. Who's gonna stop me? Me! I ran at him with my sword, but he grabbed me and lifted me into the air. Then he threw me. I landed hard and got the wind knocked out of me. Uh-oh, he might be too strong. He was getting ready to grab me again, and I swiped at him with my sword. He knocked the sword out of my hand, and it went flying. I had to run and grab it, and I knew if I tried to fight this ogre right now, I would lose. Let's get out of here, May. We'll go back to my base, and when I'm strong enough, I'll come back. I promise. Okay, thank you for trying. I didn't want to run away, but I can't save the day if I let myself get beaten by an ogre. So even though it wasn't fun to leave the fight, it was better that May and I were safe. On days 11 and 12, I brought May back to my base. I built her a room of her own with a chest and a crafting bench. Thank you so much, both of you. Of course, stay as long as you like. We're happy to have you. I was meaning to ask, do you know anything about the green goblin? That monster? I sure do. He kidnapped a friend of mine, and I'm trying to learn more about him. I'm pretty sure he lives underground somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but I've heard a lot of rumors about his underground cave hideout. If you can find out where he is, and you're strong enough to fight him, you might be able to use the element of surprise to help you defeat him. Underground, huh? That's really helpful. Thank you, May. Of course. The Green Goblin is terrible, and I'd be happy to see someone finally take him down. After I talked with May, I decided to add some food sources to my base. I know, I think I saw some chickens in the woods. Yes. So I built a fence to contain the chickens, then I went out looking for them. There you are. Come with me, chickens. I'll show you your new home. I herded the chickens back to the base and got them all set up in the fenced area. Then I cut down some grass and planted some weed at the base. Now we'll have plenty of food, and I learned more about the Green Goblin. What a successful day. On days 13 to 15, I decided to find some ways to get stronger, so I turned to Harry for advice. I think the best way to get stronger is to get some more experience. Explore new areas, go on some quests, fight more enemies. You can't learn if you don't put yourself out there, and upgrading your tools probably won't hurt either. That's a great idea, thank you. If I was going to upgrade my tools, I needed to get mining. I mined some coal and some iron too. I raced back to my base to make a furnace. Then I smelted the iron and used it to craft all iron tools. Great, now time to explore. Where can I go? I should go somewhere really different from anywhere I've been so far. 
I know, I'll go to the ice spikes. So I gathered all of my new tools and headed off to the ice spikes. Brr, it's getting cold. I'm not used to this weather. Maybe I should have brought some more supplies with me. Maybe you should have, but you didn't because you're weak and you'll never beat the green goblin. Who said that? I looked up and saw a green golem standing on top of a tall ice spike. I did. The boss sent me to check on your progress, and he's gonna laugh so hard when he hears about all this. But first, I think I'll teach you a lesson about trying to be a hero when you're really just a zero. Then he jumped down from the ice spike and landed right in front of me. But I was ready for him, and I had my brand new iron sword ready to go. Not so fast. He ran at me, and I swung my sword. He tried to hit me, but I dodged and attacked again. It was a pretty tough fight, but I managed to win in the end. After I defeated him, I noticed he dropped something. Cool, an explosive bottle. I can use this to fight the green goblin. Yes. I was so excited to show my friends what I found that I ran all the way back to my base. Harry was waiting for me. You should build an armory to keep your weapons. Great idea. So I built an armory, and after I did, I felt myself getting stronger. Whoa, I gained two hearts. On days 16 to 19, I decided to follow Harry's advice and keep exploring to get more experience. Maybe I'll find something else that will help me beat the Green Goblin or make a new friend. As I was looking around, I found an abandoned house. Anyone here? No one answered, so I let myself inside to have a look around. It was totally empty, except for a chest. I opened the chest and found an old book. I guess I'll read it. Superheroes should always take the time to read every now and again. As I read the book, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Whoa, so the Green Goblin is really Norman Osborn, the scientist. That's why he's so good at making those pumpkin bombs. I can't believe it. But it's in a book, so it must be true. Maybe this information will help me later. I grabbed the book to take with me and left the house to head back to my base. As I did, I saw the gremlins from before. Not you guys again. You better believe it, Spidey. The gremlins rushed at me and I fought them off with my sword. When they realized they were outmatched, they started to run away. This ain't the last you'll see of us. Whoa, the green goblin. Tell your boss I'm getting stronger every day and I'm coming to get my friend. I couldn't believe it. I beat the gremlins on my own this time. Wow. I was really starting to feel like a superhero who could defeat the villain and save the day. I wasn't quite ready yet, but I had already come so far. On days 20 to 22, I looked for some more bad guys to fight in the forest around my base. I wanted to get stronger and keep my friends safe at the same time. A mutant spider pig attacked May while she was looking for food, and I rushed in to save the day. Get away from her! I swung my sword and defeated the mutant spider pig easily. I was so much stronger than I was on my first day. I think I'm finally ready to take on the ogre and get your stuff back. Are you sure? He's so scary. I am. I just need to make some armor first. I gathered some more iron and crafted myself some shiny new iron armor. With this on, he won't be able to hurt me. I made my journey back to the swamp where the mean old ogre was waiting for me. Back for more, are ya? I'll be happy to beat you again if you didn't learn your lesson the first time. He grabbed me just like he did before, but when he threw me, my armor protected me from getting hurt. Nice try, but I'm ready for you this time. He was so surprised that he didn't have time to dodge my attack. I got him with my sword, then I hit him again. This time, he was the one who got knocked over. Oh, fine, thank what you came for. Just leave before the Green Goblin finds out you're here. He's scared of how strong you're getting, and he's not afraid to cheat and have someone else take you out before you find his hideout. Whoa, so he's actually getting nervous. Don't get too confident. You're still nowhere near tough enough to beat him. Just go. So I grabbed a chest full of May's things, and I headed back to my base. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base and went to find May. Here you go, I got this back for you. Oh, thank you so much. It has everything I own inside. I was so scared that I lost it all after that ogre destroyed my house. Can I stay here for a little while though, before I find a new place to live? Stay as long as you like. Have you ever thought about building a guard tower to keep the base safe in case the Green Goblin sends any goons this way? That's a great idea. I got to work building a guard tower, and when I was finished, I felt much safer. But I needed some ranged weapons to go with the guard tower, so I gathered flint 
feathers, and string, and crafted a bow and arrows. Then May came over to talk to me, and she was holding something. I found this in my chest of items, and I wanted to give it to you. My way of saying thanks for all of your help. What is it? A newspaper. It's enchanted. I think it might be useful for you. Whoa, thank you so much. With my enchanted newspaper, my new guard tower, and my bow and arrow, I was feeling more prepared than ever. On days 27 to 31, I decided to get back to exploring and looking for new ways to get stronger. I hiked out to the Badlands to see what I could find. While I was exploring, I saw some tarantulas stuck in a hole. I'll get you guys out of there, just hold on. I helped them all climb out, and then I sent them back to my base so they would have a safe place to stay for a while. Spiders have to stick together. After I helped the tarantulas, I looked around the Badlands some more. There weren't any enemies to fight, but there was a lot of terracotta. This looks cool. I'll gather some for my base. I got as much terracotta as I could take with me and went back to my base to decorate with it. I worked hard on creating a beautiful terracotta floor in my room, and when it was finished, I kicked back and ate a snack. But I couldn't rest for very long. Zozo, I need your help. I sprung into action. What's wrong? There's trouble in the rabbit burrow. We have to go help them. Let's go. On days 32 to 35, Harry and I went back to the underground rabbit burrow to check things out and help save the rabbits there. When we got there, we saw a bunch of the Green Goblin's gremlins attacking and throwing pumpkin bombs. They were destroying everything. Not so fast. Don't worry, rabbits. Your friendly neighborhood Spidey Zozo is here to help. What are you gonna do about it? I drew my sword. Remember this? They looked pretty nervous, and I started slashing left and right, taking down as many gremlins as I could. I thought I'd beaten all of them, but there was one more hiding behind a nearby wall. Before I could get to him, he pulled out another pumpkin bomb and threw it right at the geezer rabbit who helped me before. No! But it was too late. The gremlin blew him up. You'll pay for this! I took down the last gremlin fast, but I didn't feel any better. I was so upset about the Giza rabbit. It's not your fault. It's the Green Goblin. He did this. You're right, Harry. And we're going to make sure he never hurts anyone else again. On days 36 to 39, I decided to head to the beach and see if I could find anything useful there. I needed all the strength and weapons I could get if I was going to beat the Green Goblin before he could strike again. Are there any heroes out here? Please, I need help. A hero? That's me. Who said that? I can help. Me. I looked over and I saw a walrus sitting on the sand. What's wrong? Out there in the water is my favorite rock to sit on when I want to catch a few rays. But when I try to sit there now, there's a mean octopus who keeps attacking me and trying to pull me into the water. That's not very nice. You wait here, friend. I'll go teach that octopus some manners. Be careful. He's very smart. It's okay. I'm pretty smart, too. I swam out to the walrus's favorite rock and waited for the octopus to try and mess with me. Wow, what a nice rock. I sure hope no one tries to pull me into the water. But I did hope someone would try, and I was ready. I didn't think I could fight in the water while trying to swim at the same time, so I would have to be able to fight from a distance. Good thing I crafted a ranged weapon. I grabbed my bow and arrow and waited. Sure enough, that pesky octopus showed up and tried to grab me. Before he could, I fired my arrow at him. A direct hit! He tried to grab me again, so I fired a few more arrows for good measure until I was sure I had won. Then I swam back to the shore to give the walrus the good news. Thank you so much. Are you the hero that's trying to take on the green goblin? I sure am. Well, here's some advice. I heard he's strong, but not very fast. That's why he throws those pumpkin bombs. If you can avoid his bombs, it'll be easier to get him. Thanks so much. I'll remember that. On days 40 to 43, I returned home to my base. It was looking a little bit dull, so I decided to spruce up the place with some torches for extra light and to keep any zombies away. As I was finishing up, Harry came to see me. Say, this looks great. Thanks. Do you think we could make room for some more guests to stay here? I met some squirrels in the woods who said the Green Goblin blew up the tree they were living in. I thought maybe we could help them out. Sure, the more the merrier. Hey, let's build them a treehouse, then they'll feel right at home. Harry and I got to work, and before long, we built a great treehouse for the squirrels to live in. Then Harry went to get the squirrels and show them their new home. It felt good to help more people in need. 
It was a nice reminder that being a hero isn't just about beating bad guys, it's about helping those who need it. The tarantulas came to see me after I finished the treehouse, and then they told me that they heard a rumor about some baby spiders that were being held prisoner in a nearby cave. Well, I couldn't let that happen. I promised them I would go over there and rescue those baby spiders. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the cave the tarantulas told me about to save those poor kidnapped baby spiders. When I got there, I couldn't see any baby spiders anywhere. I looked all over the place, but there weren't any spiders in that cave. Huh, that's weird. You fell for my trap, Spidey. Ha 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 ha. The green goblin jumped out from behind a rock. There aren't any baby spiders here. It was a lie, but I knew that would get you to come here. Poor little hero with no one to save. Too bad, so sad. You're scum, Green Goblin. Oh, you wound me. You're running out of time, Spidey. Too bad you won't be able to save your buddy Spin before I blow him up. And when I'm done, I'll go to your base in the forest and blow that up too. That's right, I know where you've been hiding. Why are you doing this? Because I can. Wish I could stay and chat, but I've got to run. I'll leave you with some company, though. Oh, Minion! A huge Earth Elemental came into the cave! Bye, Spidey! The Green Goblin ran away and disappeared, leaving me alone with the Earth Elemental. He looked pretty tough. Uh-oh! I had no choice. If I wanted to get out of there and get back to my base, I was gonna have to fight him. On days 50 to 53, I did my best to fight the Earth Elemental. He was a lot bigger than me, but I wasn't about to back down or let myself get scared. I stared him down and got ready. The Earth Elemental ran at me and knocked me back into the cave wall. But luckily, I had my armor on and it didn't take too much damage. I jumped back onto my feet and ran at the Earth Elemental with my sword. I got a few good hits in before he knocked me back again. Next, I climbed up onto a rock and shot an arrow at him. It hit, and while he was recovering, I jumped back down and rushed up to deliver a finishing blow. He went down, and I was the winner! Woohoo! I did it! I really am turning into a superhero! Wait, what's this? There was a book on the ground! I picked it up and started to read. The notes of Norman Osborn. I hate spiders so much. One day I'll find a way to get rid of every spider in the world, and then I can finally be happy once they're gone. I'm so glad I found this underground cavern to build my laboratory and basin. It's the perfect place to do my work. So the Green Goblin hates spiders. That's why he's after me and why he took spin. That's despicable. So his lair is in an underground cavern. There's a drawing of a map here showing where it is. I'm one step closer to defeating him once and for all. On days 54 to 57, I returned to the forest and started making my way back to the base. I've got to tell my friends what I've learned. But as I was walking, I heard someone crying for help. I followed the sound and there were some baby spiders in a cage. Oh no, there really are some baby spiders in trouble. Hold on, little guys, I'll save you. I ran to let them out of the cage, but I couldn't find a key. Then a phantom swooped down on me. I was ready though, and I slashed at it with my sword until it went down. I saw that the phantom dropped the key, and also a blast protection enchantment. Awesome, this'll help keep me safe from the pumpkin bombs. I took the key and let the baby spiders out of the cage. Be free. Then I went back to my base to let the tarantulas know that I managed to help out the baby spiders. Then I told them all about what I found out about the green goblin and his lair. I showed them the map and they recognized where the caverns were. They promised to help me find the caverns when I was ready to finally have my showdown against the villain. On days 58 to 62, I decided to plant some more crops so that we could have more food at the base. I went into the forest and gathered melons, then planted a bunch of melon seeds next to my wheat. Next, I decided it was finally time to upgrade my gear again. I went back down into the mine where I found my iron and started looking for some diamonds. It took a while and a lot of hard work, but finally I found some. Sweet! Time to craft some diamond gear! I was able to use the new materials to craft a diamond sword. After that was done, I expanded the base and added some more rooms, including a bedroom for Spin. After all, he's gonna need somewhere to stay when I finally rescue him. On day 63 to 66, the squirrels came up to talk to me. They told me that I might be able to find some useful materials at the stone shores. 
so naturally, I decided to head out there and see what I could find. When I arrived there, I couldn't see much of anything that would help me beat the Green Goblin. I was starting to feel discouraged. Then, I saw a stone monster coming toward me. Oh no, I guess I have to fight this guy now. But to my surprise, he didn't want to fight. He just wanted my help getting rid of a mean mutant creeper that took over the cove and killed his uncle, Ben. I'm so sorry that happened. Of course I'll help. I asked him to show me where he last saw the mutant creeper and he pointed me in the right direction. A hero's work is never done. I guess with great power comes great responsibility, but I'm ready for it anyway. On day 67 to 70, I traveled to the part of the cove that the mutant creeper had taken over. I could get more fighting experience and help someone at the same time. Just another day of being a superhero. Come on out, you mean mutant creeper. I'm here to dispense some justice. As soon as it heard me, the mutant creeper came out of hiding and rushed at me to attack. It came at me and started hitting me, but I countered with my sword and my armor protected me from the damage. I knew I had to defeat it before it had a chance to charge up or explode. So I had to work fast, faster than I ever had before in a fight. It was hard, but I managed to take down the mutant creeper before it could blow up. Whew, that was a close one. Then I went back to the stone monster. That mutant creeper won't be bothering you ever again. All in a day's work for an up and coming superhero. On day 71 to 74, I traveled to the desert to gather some sandstone. As I was walking, I noticed an unusual rock formation. It spelled out, if you're enjoying this adventure, find more Zozo videos by searching for Zio, Zio. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Wow, nature really is amazing. Now back to what I was doing. Having a nice little desert stroll, eh, Spidey? The green goblin suddenly appeared. I wasn't expecting to fight you so soon, but I guess there's no time like the present. Watching you lose will be a gift. I drew my sword and got ready to fight. The green goblin tossed a pumpkin bomb at me and I had to dodge, but I got caught in the blast. Ouch, I lost a few hearts. I hate to admit it, but I'm still not strong enough. I need to get out of here. So that I would live to fight another day, I ran away as fast as I could before he could attack again. That was a close one. On day 75 to 78, I ran back to my base with some of the stone I managed to gather before the green goblin attacked me. I built a stone wall around the whole base. Awesome, this is looking great. At least something good came out of my trip to the desert. When I finished building the wall, Harry the rabbit came up to me. Zozo, I found something and I wanted to give it to you as a present. Thanks for everything you've done for me. You're a great friend and a real hero. Here you go, it's a cobweb. Whoa, thanks. I took the cobweb and it reminded me of my spidey strength and everything I had accomplished so far. I felt myself growing bigger and I gained three more hearts. On day 79 to 84, I decided to try out my new strength and bigger size by fighting some bad guys. If I wanted to push myself, a good way to do that would be to fight in the cold. So I went out to the snowy tundra to look for some mobs I could fight to keep everyone a little bit safer. I didn't have to look for very long before I found some gremlins bullying a snowy goat. Hey, stop that! Who's gonna stop us? Me! Oh yeah, we're so scared. They didn't know how much stronger I was, so they weren't ready for how much better I was at fighting. It didn't take long before I beat them. I asked the snowy goat if he wanted to come back to my base and stay there for a while. No thanks, I'm good. Could you walk me home though? It's just near here. Sure, so I walked with the snowy goat until we reached his house. You seem like a nice kid. Here, take this. Maybe it'll be of some use to you. Then he gave me a vine lasso. This is great, thanks. Now I can attack the green goblin from a distance. Saving people is its own reward, but it's also pretty nice to get a gift every now and then. On days 85 to 89, I went back to my base. When I got there, I saw there were gremlins attacking. Let's burn this place down before Spidey gets back. Too late, I'm already here. Uh-oh. The gremlins ran away, but I chased after them. Hey, I've gotten faster. Before too long, I had almost caught up to them, but I was stopped by the Ragnarok. Please help, those nasty gremlins stole my falconry hood. I need it for my favorite eagle. Don't worry, I'll get it back for you. Using my newly increased speed, I chased after the gremlins and caught up to them. Once I did, I beat them quickly and grabbed the falconry hood to take back to the Ragnarok. Here you go. 
Thank you so much. It's what I do. On days 90 to 94, I followed the gremlin footprints into the deep forest. This must be where they were hiding out before they attacked my base. Oh look, it's Spidey. Come to lose another fight. There was a gremlin chef waiting for me. Do I know you? Oh, but you should. I'm the Green Goblin's top henchman. The guy who handles all of his biggest problems. And you're a pretty big problem. A bug that needs to be squashed. He looked pretty tough, but I wasn't about to back down from this fight. I had to prove that I could take on the Green Goblin, so I needed to beat his right-hand man first. Let's do this! On days 95 to 97, I fought as hard as I could against the Gremlin Chef. At first, it was not going very well. He was dodging all of my attacks, one after another. Man, this guy's tough! Might as well give up now, Spidey. You'll never beat me, and you'll never beat the Green Goblin! But I thought about Spin and everyone else who the Green Goblin was putting in danger, and I knew I couldn't give up. I grabbed the vine lasso and threw it at the Gremlin Chef. It caught him! I was able to get him still enough to land a hit, and then the fight started to turn around. Finally, I knocked him down for good! As I was getting ready to leave, I noticed that he dropped something on the ground. Cave centipede leggings! I decided to put them on and see what they would do. I went back to my base and realized I could now climb up walls. Wow. This is perfect. I'll be able to use this to avoid the Green Goblin's pumpkin bombs and be faster than him. This is just what I needed. On day 98, I was back at my base and practicing climbing walls with my new cave centipede leggings. When I stopped to take a break, Harry came up to talk to me. I just wanted to say, you've turned into an amazing hero, Zozo. I'm so glad I met you. If anyone can beat the Green Goblin, it's you. Thank you. Next, May came up to see me. She brought me some diamond armor. I spent the last few days making this for you. I hope you can use it when you take on the Green Goblin. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Then the squirrels and the tarantulas thanked me for everything I had done for them. The tarantulas said that even though I wasn't a real spider, they considered me one of their own anyway. It really meant a lot to me. I was feeling braver and stronger than ever, with all of my friends by my side. On day 99, I asked the tarantulas to give me directions to the Green Goblin's underground lair. They told me where to go, and I headed out. It was now or never. As I was making my way toward the caverns, a cockroach scuttled past me. You can do it! Thanks, cockroach. I wasn't sure how she knew what I was doing, but I appreciated the encouragement anyway. Finally, I reached the Green Goblin's cavern lair, but the outside was crawling with green golems standing guard. Oh no, how am I going to get inside? I'll help you. It was the walrus I saved from the octopus. I'll take care of these guys. You get inside and get to the Green Goblin. On day 100, it was finally time for me to face off against the biggest, baddest villain around, the Green Goblin. I was pretty scared, but I also knew how far I'd come and how many people believed in me. So you made it. Such a shame you came all this way just to die. He threw a pumpkin bomb at me, but I dodged it and climbed up a nearby wall. I learned some new tricks, Goblin. They won't be enough to beat me. We'll see about that. From my place on the wall, I shot an arrow at him. He dodged it. But I jumped down and swung at him with my sword, and it hit him. Then I ran back up the wall and got ready to attack from a distance again. I wouldn't shoot any more arrows at me if I were you. Look what I have. And he had Spin there with him, tied up. I had to get Spin out of the way so he wouldn't get hurt when I attacked the Green Goblin. I thought quickly and used my vine lasso to pull Spin toward me and out of the way just as the Green Goblin threw another pumpkin bomb. Then I remembered, I had the explosive bottle. I could beat the Green Goblin at his own game. Let's get out of here, Spin. Running away, are you? Nope, just getting far enough to do this. I threw the explosive bottle at the Green Goblin. Then I got out of there as fast as I could. Boom, the cavern exploded and I knew the Green Goblin was gone once and for all. I finally had my friend back and the land was saved. All thanks to your friendly neighborhood Zozo.